often as they can behind Frank Gore, who after a gain of a couple is wrapped up. San Francisco's offensive line, two-thirds of the Niners' rushing yards last week came behind the left side. Jennings and the 10-time pro bowler Larry Allen, both healthy together and very effective. The Niners' backs and receivers, North Turner, as J.C. mentioned, likes to get Alex Smith out of the pocket, boots and rolls. Eric Johnson gets the start at tight end, though the rookie Vernon Davis is active coming back from a broken fibula today. Second and eight for San Francisco. And a flag. The pass is caught by Antonio Bryan, knocked out of bounds, shy of a first down by Julian Peterson, the ex-49er. And we'll see if this is coming back. And that was Julian Peterson that jumped off sides. And you know, that guy's anxious today. He's coming back to the Niners. Coming back here for the first time. A lot of emotion, excitement. You can see right there on his face. Just, you know, that guy's ready to go. Defense offside number 59. That's a five yard penalty. Repeat second down. It is Julian Peterson, understandably a bit froggy this afternoon. We take a look at Seattle's defensive front first. Fisher, Bernard, and Wistrom have started all 11 games this year. Chuck Darby had a career-high two sacks last week against the Rams. In the linebacking court, Julian Peterson, the story, his first appearance here in a visiting uniform. The Seahawks secondary, a little banged up at the right corner position. Kelly Herndon has a hamstring issue. His backup, uh, Kelly Jennings, tweaked the knee in practice. This is Gore changing directions to very little success as he is dragged down at the 35 by Jordan Babineau. And Matt, what the Seahawks do defensively is they bring a lot of pressure from a lot of different places. And it's not only to get after the quarterback, but it's also run blitzes. It's good against the run because they get guys in every gap and they can blow up the plays like they did just then on the front side. Frank Gore has nowhere to go. San Francisco has converted on 35 percent of their third down opportunities though they were fantastic on this capacity last week in Detroit. 10 of 19 in the road win. Third and three Johnson the guy in motion and another flag. This one looks like it'll go against San Francisco. Encroachment, defense number 99. Not so five fast. Yard penalty. The five yards will result in a first down. Rocky Bernard, the guilty party for Seattle, as San Francisco first down. You got to wonder, Matt, if these, 40, if these Seahawks are ready to play. This could be a trap game for them. They said all week long the practices were pretty relaxed. And, you come out right here on this first series, you have two offsides penalties. That's just concentration. They've got to make sure they're ready to play today because the 49ers are a pretty good football team right now. First and 10 for Smith on a three receiver set out of the shotgun play action with Gore. Smith on the move as he so often is and the pass is incomplete. The 49ers last week won the time of possession battle, specifically in the first half against Detroit. I would imagine the goal would be the same here today. Well, they've got to control the ball. They've got to keep that Seattle offense on, on their sideline. They've got to try to keep it close. They haven't scored a lot of points in the first half. In fact, they've only scored 65 total points in the first half all season. So they've got to get some points on the board, try to control the clock with Frank Gore and control passing attack win the time of possession battle. On second and ten now. Another triple receiver set for San Francisco. The quick pass is caught by Arnez Battle. Taken out of bounds by Lofa Tatuku close to another first down. So defensively, what's the focus this afternoon for John Marshall in Seattle? Well, they've got to continue to attack. That's what they do. They got nine sacks against the Raiders a couple of weeks ago. They lead the league in sacks this year with 34 total. They've got to stay aggressive, and they've got to get after Alex Smith. And like I said, when you're aggressive and you're bringing guys not only to try to get after the quarterback, but it also blows up the run game, so they can't afford to get past it. This is third and two. A Seattle penalty helped the 49ers convert their first third down try today with four receivers on the field. Smith out of the gun. And he passes incomplete, looking at Arnett's battle with what would have been a first down reception. And that'll bring out Andy Lee in the punting unit. 
you know that's a that's a big stop for Seattle if only because the 49ers have been very good on first possessions this year and they put Alex Smith in the shotgun to give him some time to get away from the pressure you see Lofa Tatupu coming straight in the middle but Alex has a lot of time here that's a pass that he should not make the Arnaz battle that's one that got away from it. Nate Burleson took a punt back 90 yards against the Rams last weekend he starts this return at his five and is wrapped up immediately Brian Gilmore makes the tackle Sean Alexander with rough field position back on the field Southwest Airlines fun fairs are available every day to your favorite destinations starting at just $59. You are now free to move about the country. I'm eating this amazing chicken enchilada. Mm -hmm. Gooey sauce, melty cheese, but it's... it's Inchophobia. Fear of messy enchiladas. I have just the thing. A chicken enchilada. No. The sauce and cheese are on the inside. Genius. Please, doctor. Taco Bell's chicken enchilada grilled stuff... Burrito. Smothered enchilada taste wrapped up and grilled to go. For more enchilada taste and less enchilada price, think outside the bun. Way back then, we had the horse and carriage. There was no television then. People listen to the radio. Get the clothes out, wash them on the washboard. And then the calculates got smaller and smaller. 45 would drop and it would play. If you held a rabbit ears in exactly the right position. I used to have to parallel park myself. NFL Sunday is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 41. We go back to that last punt. Here's the 10 yard line. Return men are taught to put their heels on the 10 yard line. If you've got a backpedal to catch the ball, let it go. See, Nate Burleson catches it on the four, and now they've got terrible field position. The reason why that happens Matt like you said he took one back 90 yards last week you feel like you're invincible you can do it every time that's a no-no so Seneca Wallace in the offense to work in rough shape the first carry by Sean Alexander in a couple of months results in a gain of maybe a yard or two well Seneca Wallace has certainly done a great job keeping things warm while Matt Hasselbeck returns two and one making his fourth consecutive start today We mentioned Hasselback is available today in that third quarterback capacity. It is very unlikely we'll see him on the field this afternoon. After no gain, Wallace in the air, and he overthrows his intended target, Dion Branch. Seattle's offensive line has been a talking point the past couple of weeks. Chris Spencer starts at center for the second straight week as Robbie Tobeck continues to mend after a bout with a nasty flu bug. And Tom Ashworth makes his fourth consecutive start for Sean Locklear. Alexander back at tailback. And keep your eyes on Daryl Jackson today. He's had some big games against San Francisco the past couple of years. You know, this is the first time Seneca's played here in front of a family and friends. He can't try to do too much. He should have checked that ball down on second down. And he knew it as soon as he threw the pass. Here is the Sacramento native on third and ten. Look out for the blitz. He dances out of the end zone. This is Wallace at his best running for a Seattle first down. This is what Mike Holmgren has encouraged him to do. You feel the pressure or you go through your progressions, they're not there, pull it down and run because he's so well at it. The problem is that he doesn't do enough of it. You can see he feels the pressure from Chad Williams. He steps up and now he makes the decision to run and you can see the guy's got a lot of speed. He can just run away from guys and create something positive from something that, that probably was going to be a negative play. So the legs of the Seattle quarterback accounting for their first first down this afternoon. Sean Alexander around the corner and tackled by Walt Harrison, Marcus Douglas. 
Let's meet the rest of the 49ers defensively. Their front, the featured guy is Bryant Young, sixth on the active sacks list. Matt Hasselbeck told us yesterday he's as good a player as we'll face all year. The linebacking core, one of the two moves Mike Nolan made a couple of weeks ago, giving Brandon more than the starting job. That's been huge. The other move was in the secondary where third-year man Keith Lewis was given a starting assignment at free safety, and he too has responded big. Second and six, Wallace looking to throw this one complete to Deion Branch for another Seahawks first down. There's an example right there of just taking what the defense gives you, and it's so hard for quarterbacks who haven't played a lot to get it, to understand that. They think they have to force the ball down the field and make a big play every play, and that's something that Seneca Wallace did early when he first started starting, but now he's really starting to understand this offense. A couple of first downs on the drive. Again, they start with Alexander. And after a gain of a couple, we check in on the field with Chris Myers. Matt, I talked to Sean Alexander after pregame warm-up, said he's not 100% in this game. He's wearing protective padding, not only at his left foot, but over both shoes on both feet. Stump Mitchell, running back coach, said they will not hesitate giving him the ball a number of times, maybe double-digit carries. They will watch his healing foot and also check his game endurance throughout the afternoon. Yeah, that's going to be the key, is, is his conditioning. Is he going to be able to hold up and for how long? Well, Morris Morris checks into the game. He makes his first carry, and it's a productive one. Charging forward close to another Seattle first down. Brandon Moore and Ronald Fields making the hit for San Francisco. So the offensive focus for Seattle with Alexander back. Let's get right back to business. Yeah, they've got to get back in the flow, get him in the flow, get him comfortable back hand handling the ball and see exactly what he can do right now. Can he make all the cuts? Does he have the burst? Does he have the explosion? But at the same time, the focus can't be only on him. Seneca Wallace has to continue to manage this offense. Two backs with Wallace and on play action. That pass is caught what looked like shy of a first down marker. D.J. Hackett makes the reception. You know, as, as quickly as this Seattle offense moves, J.C., for the 49ers, it's a, it's a matter of <laughs> just holding tight. Just hang on. Hang on, because Seattle scores a lot of points early in the game. They've, they've scored more first, first quarter points than any team in the league, and this defense has to just hang on, keep this game close late in the ball game, and give themselves a chance to win. But if they can't stay close early, it's going to be tough for them to get back in the game. Alexander checks back in for Seattle on second and short. And Alexander has the first down running right. And this is where they really miss John Alexander in these short yardage and, and especially on the goal line situations. He just has a knack for sliding through the hole. He turns his body, makes himself small, and just kind of slips through the hole. And they really need him on the goal line. That's where they, this offense has struggled running the ball. Maurice Morris hasn't scored a touchdown in all the time that he's played. And Sean Alexander, when you get close, he's the guy that can get the ball in the end zone. The 10th play of the drive coming up for Seattle play action again. Wallace looking deep down the middle of the field and that one's picked off. Again it's Keith Lewis who forced a fumble and stopped a Lions drive at the end of the game last week. Boy those new starters defensively for San Francisco paying immediate dividends for Mike Nolden. Hey want a Bud Light? Yeah. Whoa, rubber floors. Just had them installed. Now we'll never break a Bud Light. Oh, nice. Remote. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Hi. <laughs> Too much bounce? Maybe. Champagne glasses may seem familiar, but you've never seen a car virtually park itself. The new LS, unprecedented.
best in German engineering. A powerful motor and a handling system for precision and control from Braun. Introducing the world's first electric shaver with the expertise of Gillette Blade technology. Precisely angled edges cut hair more effectively with every stroke. For Braun's closest, most comfortable shave ever, it even cleans and renews itself. The new 360 complete from Braun. Precision, control, perfection. Thanksgiving Day on Fox. Tio and the Cowboys take on the Bucks. It's a Fox NFL Thanksgiving Day special in HD. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Bud Light. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Well, Seneca Wallace had directed a nice drive, nine plays. They had mixed up the run and the short pass nicely, but his first long attempt intercepted. And Alex Smith and the 49ers take over at their own seven-yard line. This is Frank Gore busting a big one. There he goes down center field. Gore finally wrapped up at the 42-yard line. Oh, he had a big one last week in Detroit. Marcus Trufant was the only guy in his way, a gain of 51 yards. And Seattle has nine guys in the box, and Frank makes Herndon miss right here, and then he makes Babineau miss right there, and now he's off to the races. He had a big 61-yard touchdown last week, but you see him just lower his shoulder, run through Kelly Herndon, and now make Babineau miss down the field. That's what Frank Gore brings to this team, is he's strong enough inside to break some tackles, and then he's fast enough to run away from guys. His ninth rush of 20 or more yards. They take the NFL lead in that capacity. Play action is Maurice Hicks checks in to give Gore a puffer. Eric Johnson left wide open on the misdirection. And another San Francisco first down. Let's go back to that run. Look at how many guys Seattle has in the box. Actually, there's nine guys right there. And then watch Frank Gore. You can't block all nine guys. The running back has to make somebody miss. He makes one miss right there. Then he makes the free safety miss. And now it's a huge gain. And what that does now is it sets up the play action that we just saw on the misdirection back to Eric Johnson. We're back in after the 18-yard reception by Johnson. Gore again. But Frank Gore, last week in Detroit, broke off that 61-yarder on a third and 16 play. You know, these are plays that, that aren't designed to chew up 50 and 60 yards at a time, but Gore's been able to break these big ones successfully. Because, again, like I said, he's strong enough inside to break some tackles. And when teams put eight, nine guys in the box, the running back has to account for one or two guys. So he's got to make a guy miss, and that's what Frank has been able to do the last few weeks. A gain of a yard on first down, so on second and nine now. Smith looking left, finally flushed out of the pocket, being chased by Bryce Fisher and company. And that pass is thrown out of bounds. With more on Frank Gore, let's check in again with Chris Myers. Yeah, Matt J.C., he said before the game, you know, coming off that concussion last week, he felt fine. It was the hardest hit he'd ever taken, but he said he didn't remember the play until he watched it on tape, but it made him dizzy again just looking at it. The harder hit was when his head hit the ground. He said, maybe it'll knock some sense into me. And he said that Norv Turner told me a lot of misdirection plays today that I could have a big day against the Seahawks and Frank kind of reminds me of one of those throwback guys he really really cares about playing football he loves it and he, he just lives and dies football he's here all the time at the facility and he, I mean last year after they lost the game he cried because guys were partying in the parking lot he really loves this game play game offense five yard penalty still third down yeah third and nine the Niners couldn't execute before the play clock expired so the delay a game will march them back on third down all suited up today head coach Mike Nolan it's been a, a fairly big story throughout the NFL the official uniform outfitter of the league Reebok designed the suit for him and uh, tipping his cap respecting the game and the tradition he suited up today it looks good too I, I like it. I believe I really it. do Reebok ought to Start making suits and let all of them wear. But some guys like Holmgren probably wouldn't want to do that. Third and 14. And 
the short pass is caught by Eric Johnson short of a first down. That'll bring on Joe Nedney in the field goal unit. So the big 60-plus uh, yarder sets the 49ers up and puts them in a position to get the points first. This is definitely in Joe Nedney territory. A 39-yard attempt. He's three out of four from this range between 30 and 39 this year. Trying to convert on 11 consecutive field goal attempts, and the kick is up and through. The Seahawks board in the first quarter here in San Francisco. First, eight-speed automatic transmission. The new LS, unprecedented. Introducing Wendy's Double Melt. In the middle of two hot and juicy fresh ground beef patties is a slice of pepper jack, cheddar sauce, bacon, and jalapenos. Oh, that's okay. I like the middle. For flavor where it counts, do what tastes right. Hey, look. Over there. Isn't that, uh... Mark Davidson? I can't believe she got that promotion. All because of an email. Well, it started with an email. It started with an email. At first, she did all that data mining. She saw a pattern. And then she got an idea. She sent in her email. In her email, and that led to the group's presentation. Which led to the Bed North merger. merger. Right. Yeah. Still, I send email. And they're funny, Tom. With the right software, people are ready to turn information into opportunity. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Microsoft. So Software for the people ready business. By Wendy's. Do Wendy's new double melt and do what tastes right. By FedEx. For all your shipping needs. And by the new LS. Unprecedented. A John Edney field goal starts the scoring here this afternoon. Set up by the great run by Frank Gore. Making a habit of big runs Josh Scobie back to return the kick and it's a short kick Scobie picks up at the 13 and returns it out to the 24 yard line Sacramento native Seneca Wallace back to work in the first quarter way back then we had the horse and carriage there was no television then. People listen to the radio. Get the clothes out, wash them on the washboard. And then the calculates got smaller and smaller. The 45 would drop and it would play. If you held a rabbit ears in exactly the right position. I used to have to parallel park myself. Download hundreds of movies with AT&T Home Zone. TV with the power of the internet. Another innovation from the new AT&T. Your world delivered. You know, FedEx really helped us with our overnight shipping, even heavy stuff. Now I've added FedEx Ground for everyday shipping. FedEx is saving us a ton of time. So why aren't we getting more done? Maybe we should get rid of the half pipe. Oh, the half pipe stays. Gotta keep the half pipe. FedEx ground. Fast, reliable, and for less than you think. 
now on DVD. He did this himself in his own blood? Professor Langdon, you're in grave danger. From director Ron Howard. You're saying this is real? Real enough to kill for. Tom Hanks. Sorry! The Da Vinci Code, now on two-disc DVD. Boy, great to see Hall of Fame coach Bill Walsh here in San Francisco this afternoon. He is one of many 49er greats from the past here to, uh, to pay tribute to Jerry Rice at halftime. Yeah, it's great to see Bill Walsh having some health issues, but looking good there and glad to see him out. Well, we remind you to stick with us at halftime for those ceremonies. As Seneca Wallace begins the possession with a first down reception. As Derek Smith made the tackle around the first down marker, Max Strong making the catch out of the backfield for Seattle. But much better by Seneca Wallace. You can see him go through his progression reads. So hopefully he's settling down now early in the game in that first drive. He forced some bad throws, in particular the interception. And, you know, you got to wonder, this is his first time coming home. He's from nearby Sacramento, first time playing here. Probably pressed a little bit in that first drive to impress the family. Four receiver set to hand to Sean Alexander. Drop for a loss. JC, you mentioned Seneca Wallace, a Sacramento native. Class of 1999, Cordoba High School. All city team as a senior the fall of the previous year. He went on to Sacramento City College. And in fact, told us yesterday that the first NFL game he ever saw, ironically, Seattle at San Francisco, right here in the stadium. And off to Sean Alexander. And so far, not much for the reigning MVP, Derek Smith on the tackle once again. That gives us an opportunity to check in for the first time today with Chris Rose in Los Angeles. All right, Matt, the team that beat Seattle in Super Bowl 40, still hanging around, but barely. Under a minute to go in Cleveland. Steelers down three. Big Ben, the shovel pass to Willie Parker. Steelers improve to four and six with the four-point win. Back to Matt, JC, and Chris. Chris, thanks. Crazy day again for Big Ben. Three picks. And, in fact, they have uh, more information on the rest of the day in the NFL. Some wild offensive numbers being put up all around time the league. San Francisco. That's their first team timeout. And the 49ers spend a defensive timeout here in the first quarter. 2.22 left. Niners buy a field goal in the first. Just imagine how the pregame preparations will change. Knowing even the tiniest, never-before-seen details will now be captured on the Samsung 1080p LCD HD TV. With Samsung, it's not that hard to imagine. There's strong, and then there's army strong. It's more than physical strength. It is emotional strength. Not just strength in numbers, the strength of brothers. Not just the strength to get yourself over, the strength to get over yourself. There's nothing stronger than the U.S. Army, because there is nothing stronger than a U.S. Army soldier. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. Visit GoArmy.com slash strong. This is Gary Poole, married for 10 years, but didn't know it until he had fresh brewed premium roast coffee and a McGriddles. It was like he was seeing his wife for the very first time. It's like we're newlyweds all over again. Wake up and smell your life. In two days. Come on, man. He's not that stupid. <laughs> But I've been wrong before. Have the most fun. These little guys love me. In two million years. Ice Age The Meltdown. Nice. On DVD Tuesday. Storm jacket, get a $20 gift certificate towards a future purchase. San Francisco spends the first quarter of timeout defensively. 222 left in the first. We talked about head coach Mike Nolan earlier wearing the Reebok design suit this afternoon. And doing so to tip his cap and, and pay respect to the game and the tradition of the NFL and head coaches that 
Used to wear formal attire on the sidelines. It's a 39 for Wallace. And that pass is dropped. Jeremy Stevens in traffic. And Seattle punts it away. Good job defensively by the Niners. They fake the blitz up front. A lot of guys moving around. Then they all drop into coverage. Jeremy Stevens going to try to come and run this crossing route. Runs right into zone. You see Brandon Moore underneath. And then here comes Keith Lewis from his zone in the hook. Makes a play on the ball. Rookie punter Ryan Plackemeyer on, averaging just over 45 yards. Of Brandon Williams is the deep man for San Francisco, tracking it near the sideline, and it takes a decidedly Seattle bounce. You know, we talked about some of the figures that, that Mike Nolan is paying tribute to in wearing the suit. It starts with Paul Brown, the legendary owner auteur of the Cleveland Browns, who later went on to wear the formal wear with Cincinnati. Hank Stram with the monogram jacket, of course, head coach Tom Landry in Dallas. And that fedora. And then how about there, his father, Dick Nolan, giving respects to all those guys. And how about, I said some guys wouldn't like it. Can you imagine Mike Holmgren with a tie on right here? And, collar on he probably wouldn't be too comfortable those big coaches <laughs> they just want to be comfortable you see him pulling up his pants oh, right there comfortable that. shirt on I'd like not that he wouldn't look good Andy Reid in a suit <laughs> how about that somebody could dress up Belichick that would help out a little bit this is Frank Gore another gritty run finally wrestled down at the 15 yard line by Jordan Babineau Let's check in again with Chris Myers. And Mike Nolan got a little teasing when he came out. Uh, one of his assistant coaches said he looked like a movie usher. And another one said they were going to dress up in tuxes and try to outdo him. But he did say, Mike Nolan said, that Jack Del Rio would also sport the look on uh, Monday night honoring the uh, dressed-up coach. He said all that Reebok gave him was the, uh, the coat and the tie. He had to get his own pants. And, of course, he's wearing Reebok shoes. Yeah, and Chris, they, they, don't, they don't look like the kind of shoes you'd wear to a ballroom dancing competition. Frank Gore once again around the right side. Again, Babino on the stop for Seattle. Those look like golf shoes, actually, but it works with the suit. Why not? Well, uh, kind of. You know, I can think of some better ones to wear with the suit than those, but, you know, he's got to walk up and down the sideline. Black, he's got a black suit on. I, I guess it works. On first and ten. Smith hits Maurice Hicks out of the backfield, making people miss. And finally stopped by Chuck Darby, tackled at the 24-yard line. But well, that could have been a lot worse for San Francisco. It could have, but a couple of things that made that play successful is, is Alex Smith continued to drop. Anytime you run a screen, the quarterback has to get depth, get away from the running back and, and force the lineman to continue to come after you. Watch him continue to drop back. Right there, he keeps dropping, getting more depth. Now he drops it to Frank Gore, who makes a guy, I mean, uh, Maurice Hicks, who makes one guy miss and turns it into a positive game. So time ticks away on the first quarter here in San Francisco. The Joe Nedney field goal has the 49ers on top early. Fox NFL Sunday returns right after this. Why are you guys so awesome? What do you have that we don't have? To be a rock star, you need the style. Give me a power slide. Full throttle. The hair. I'll have one small glass of carrot juice. We don't have that here. One cube of tofu. Dude, we don't have that. Do you have a walnut? One walnut? <sighs> Jack Black, Kyle Gass, Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. Rated R starts Wednesday. Soundtrack now available. You're watching Fox NFL Sunday. This game is rated T for T. Thanks, Triple H. I appreciate it. I didn't start out a 10-time world champion. I am the game, Triple H. The king of kings. I started at the bottom and worked my way up. It's time to unleash the animal. 
Now only one thing can control me, and that's you. Are you ready for some hot diva action? So don't just watch it, live it. WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Don't just watch it, live it. Equipped with a serious satellite radio, and you'll get a 12-month subscription to the best radio on radio. Whoops. We trust the experts at NFL.com. It's the best night of drama on TV. Fox Tuesday, first at 8. He saved her life. It's okay. I'm going to protect you. Now a victim is obsessed with him. I need you to help me. And this attraction could become fatal. An all-new standoff, then at 9. Is he going to die? Will House risk everything to save a patient? This test isn't exactly FDA approved. You committed a crime! Do something! An all-new House. It all starts at 8, 7 Central, Fox Tuesday. Viewer discretion advised. It's a shocking all-new Family Guy shocker. Abstinent! Chance to be bound. Ear sex. Oh, God! What's that about abstinence? No! Now I'm abstinent! Ah! Oh, I see what you're driving at. Followed by The War at Home, tonight on Fox. Viewer discretion advised. That's why you got to play the games. If you looked at it on paper, you'd think Seattle would get into the end zone early today. Absolutely not the case. The NFL's highest scoring first quarter offense shut out through the first today. And it, it, you have to wonder if they're really ready to play. You know, Matt Hasselbeck told us that they practices were real relaxed. And look at the mental errors already. Julian Peterson jumping off sides. Nate Burleson catching a punt on the four-yard line. And then in the first, first drive, Seneca Wallace forcing the ball into coverage instead of taking the check down. Those are all mental mistakes that they've made early in this ball game, and which, which makes you have to really wonder, are they here? Are they really taking this game seriously? 33 for San Francisco. Maurice Hicks is the lone back with Alex Smith. With protection. And the pass is complete. Arnez Battle, second 49er uh, leading receiver, second only to Frank Gore. Not enough to convert on the first down, however. You know, Julian Peterson leads this team in sacks going against his old buddy, Jonas Jennings. He gets a little help right there from Larry Allen. Still is able to get some pressure on Alex Smith, but that's going to be a good matchup all day long to watch. One of the mistakes for Seattle has come on special teams. Nate Burleson back to receive his second punt of the afternoon. Andy Lee gets off a high one, and this will bounce out of bounds at the 27-yard line. 13.35 left in the half. San Francisco by three. Jeep vehicle like the new Wrangler Unlimited, equipped with a Sirius satellite radio, and you'll get a 12 month subscription to the best radio on radio. Now I'm gonna try Hurricane. Show off. Okay. Gooey sauce. Melty cheese. Sauce. Cheese. Inchophobia, fear of messy enchiladas. No! Is that bad? Yes, but the cure is quite good. A chicken enchilada. No! No, relax. The sauce and cheese are on the inside. And I'm cured. Taco Bell's chicken enchilada grilled stuffed burrito. Smothered enchilada taste wrapped up and grilled to go. For more enchilada taste and less enchilada price, think outside the bun. Maybe we can evolve into water creatures. That's genius, Sid. Call me squid. In two days, get ready for a complete and total meltdown. Ah! Ice Age The Meltdown. Fabulous. On DVD Tuesday. Unstoppable. Sasha Cohen is. So is her Citizen Echo Drive. Fueled by light, it never needs a battery. It's unstoppable. Just like the people who wear it. Citizen Echo Drive watches. Unstoppable. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by the all-new 2007.
Seven Wrangler Unlimited, a new species from Jeep. By WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Don't just watch it, live it in stores now. By Citizen Watch. And by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Uh, what is left of Kizar Stadium before Candlestick Point, before the Oakland Coliseum. That was where professional sports were played in the San Francisco Bay Area. Stadium issues uh, continue to haunt the Bay Area's pro football franchises. The handoff to Sean Alexander, stuck for a loss. Ronald Field and Brian Young. It's been in the news a lot, and it's something that's driving the 49er faithful nuts. Folks up here went through it with the Raiders in the late 70s and early 80s, and, and here again, you're talking about a franchise maybe picking up and moving. And that's a shame, because obviously there's so much history here in this area, and you know, the way it sounds to me is that, that they're really leaning towards moving to Santa Clara. We'll have to keep an eye on that, see how that develops. Play action, and that one's picked off. Walt Harris, his fifth interception of the season, and the second today thrown by Seneca Wallace. And again, Seneca knows that that's not where he should have gone with the ball. When we talked to those guys in the meetings, they knew that San Francisco played a lot of two-man. That means two safeties deep, and everybody else is playing man coverage, but under the receivers. Watch Walt Harris right here. Watch him just jump under Dion. Let him run by him. Just play underneath him. Runs right under him and catches that interception. He's not worried about worried about the deep route because he's got a safety deep. Seneca Wallace threw the ball into coverage again. That's nine takeaways by the San Francisco defense in their last two and a half games. And at some point, you know, you have to credit the defensive side as well as criticizing what's happening with the Seattle offense. Well, they played very well defensively, much more aggressive, making things happen. Smith's first down pass is caught by Antonio Bryant, the fifth-year pro who leads the 49ers in receiving yards to pick up of 16 more and another 49er first down. Johnson in motion on first down. Play action to Gore. The end around. Brian Gilmore with running room. Tackled inside the 15. Leroy Hill got there from the outside linebacker spot, but some of the creative play calling here by North Turner in the first half. Well, you'll always get gadget plays from North Turner. That's how you keep a defense on its heels. But those guys up front did a great job of executing this play, Eric Heitman, the center, got out around the corner. Jonas Jennings, number 75, was out in front of the play. And then Antonio Bryant, their wide receivers, he and Arnez Battle do a great job of blocking down the field. 49ers on the march for breaking tackles and tripped up at the 10. Boy, had it not been for Marcus Trufant, Gore had a corner of the end zone in his sights. But again, Frank Gore makes a guy miss. There's going to be a safety that comes right in the hole. Right there, you can see Ken Hamlin just jumps right in the hole, and, and Frank Gore makes a miss. Watch number 26, right in the hole. Nobody there except he and Frank Gore, and he gets nothing but air. The kind of moves that prompted Sports Illustrated into rescinding their original critiquing of Frank Gore in 2005, they now call him the most underrated back in the league. Play action. Gore makes the catch. No gain on the play as Leroy Hill was there to make the tackle at the 10-yard line for Seattle. And that's a play right there that, that Alex Smith, being a mobile guy, ran the ball a lot in college. There was a lot of room to run right there instead of dumping that ball off to Frank Gore and getting tackled for no gain. If he would have pressed the defense, he probably would have had a big play, maybe even gotten into the end zone. On third and five now, the rookie Michael Robinson replaces Gore in the backfield. The start of play today, the 49ers' last five trips into the red zone all resulted in field goals. Empty backfield with Robinson in motion. 
Smith over the middle, touchdown San Francisco. Arnez battle his third touchdown reception of the year. What a nicely drawn up play that was. It sure was. With that motion by Michael Robinson, it forced the corner to widen, and that left Leroy Hill on Arnez battle, and that's a mismatch. Anytime you get a wide receiver on a linebacker, you've got to go to him, and Arnez just jumped right inside of him, beat him off the line of scrimmage. All nine make it 10 given the PAT here. San Francisco points have come off Seattle turnovers this afternoon. Point after tries good, a five play, 40 yard San Francisco drive. And the underdog 49ers lead it 10 zip. The beat that I'm thinking is. This game is rated T for T. Thanks, Triple H. I appreciate it. I didn't start out a 10-time world champion. I am the game, Triple H. The king of kings. I started at the bottom and worked my way up. It's time to unleash the animal. Now only one thing can control me, and that's you. Are you ready for some hot diva action? So don't just watch it. Live it. WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Don't just watch it. Live it. Jeep vehicle like the new Wrangler Unlimited equipped with a Sirius satellite radio and you'll get a 12 month subscription to the best radio on radio. Now I'm going to try Hurricane. Show off. Baby, go down to Radio Shack and ask them what I want in a wireless phone or, or plan. Because I have looked everywhere and I still have no clue. MP3s, cameras, streaming stuff, Bluetooth. What is Bluetooth? I don't know, but the guys at Radio Shack do. Together, you can sort it out. So I'm no good at multitasking. Radio Shack, your neighborhood wireless store. If we're gonna go down, might as well go down swinging. With just two episodes left this fall, Run! Prison Break is about to explode. Are you ready for this? Today is the day we stop running. An all-new prison break. Field discretion advised at 8, 7 central tomorrow on Fox. Just a great call by North Turner, the offensive coordinator on the touchdown. Right now, Kelly Herndon, a corner, is on Arnez Battle, the wide receiver. But watch what happens when the motion comes. He's got to widen out, and now you've got a linebacker covering Arnez Battle, the wide receiver. It's a mismatch. Jumps right inside of him. And it's an easy throw for Alex Smith. That's a great strategize. That's how you draw up a play in practice. When you go in and you draw up a game plan, that's exactly what you want to happen. Josh Scobie back to receive the Nedney kick. Starts the return at the two-yard line. And is tripped up at the 22. Michael Robinson makes the special teams hit. The Visa check card. Because money shouldn't slow you down. Life takes faster money. Life takes Visa. You, uh, you need some help? Yeah. Could you give me a jump? Sure. Give it a try. Uh, try giving it some gas.
Thanks. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Visa. Go on, live life, and remember that no matter what it takes, life takes Visa. Well, it's been a rough start for Seneca Wallace here, playing in front of a home-friendly crowd, and, and yeah. as though he needs somebody to remind yeah. him. Hasselbeck's probably telling him, hey, look, bro, man, I need you to play better. My knee's not feeling real good. If you don't start playing better, they may put me in the game. I'm not ready, so I need you to play better, man. Well, credit to San Francisco defense, which has really clamped down in recent weeks. Maurice Morris is the back with Wallace on play action on first down. Wallace has some running room up the middle of the field and runs for a Seattle first down. For more, let's check in with Chris Myers. Matt, Mike Holmgren, as JC's mentioning, livid with the lethargic start by his entire team. But as you saw a moment ago, there was a gathering, kind of a regroup session on the sideline by the offense off of that match. Matt Hasselback saying to Seneca Wallace, hey, just relax, don't force it. If you need to run, do so. Hasselback also mentioning before the game, think of him as the two-and-a-half quarterback that if he had to come into the game, he would be available. Yeah, Chris, thanks. And, and this is part of the value of Matt Hasselback. He's not one of those superstar starters that when he's inactive just goes away. He's been doing this kind of thing for the past few weeks. And he told us yesterday it's not tapping Seneca Wallace constantly during a game with, hey, Seneca, hey, Seneca, do this, do this. Right. He's been doing a lot of that intermediary work and go between stuff with Mike Holmgren, with the line, with the receiving core to make things a little easier and, on Seneca. And that's the way he's got to handle it because Seneca's got enough people in his ear telling him what to do and calling a place. He doesn't need another guy doing that, but he can always come to Hasselbeck when he has a question. Seattle comes up short after the measurement. Second and one now. Maurice Morris around the corner and has enough for a Seattle first down. Mark Roman makes the tackle for San Francisco. Of course, for Maurice Morris, you know, the return of Sean Alexander means a, a not so gradual decrease in playing time. And Morris had really been outstanding the last couple of weeks. 262 rushing yards in the absence of the NFL MVP. Yeah, he really found his group running the ball really well, especially inside. You can see he's, he's running the ball a little quicker, a little more, a little more determination hitting the holes than Sean probably is right now. Check down pass is swatted away. Brandon Moore there to make the stuff after they checked it down to Morris. Brandon Moore has responded with a huge past couple of weeks. Well, you saw those two guys right there, Brandon Moore and Keith Lewis. Those are the, really the two guys responsible for the resurgence of this defense. You can see him reading the play right there. He beats the tackle. Chris Spencer was actually the center out there trying to block him and makes, makes the play, but... Brandon Moore is a big play guy. He told us right now he's just relying on athletic ability. He wants to read things a lot quicker. Certainly did on that play. Loss is seven on second and 17. The slant completed to Dion Branch, and that'll put Seattle shy of a first down by about five yards. But back to Brandon Moore. We spoke to him, as you mentioned, the other day, J.C., and he told us about getting the news that he was starting, and, and it happened to come just a few days after the 49ers came back from Chicago and he was given some rubber bands to wear <laughs> around his wrist as a lucky token from a, a flight attendant who was doing magic tricks. He said, I'm not a superstitious guy, but these rubber bands have brought me some luck. Yeah, whatever, whatever it takes. Everybody's looking for an edge. Third and five, and the pass is thrown behind Daryl Jackson. So the 49ers defense which had been allowing opponents to score on an NFL high 42% of their possessions holds again. And they've been playing very well, like I said earlier, since Brandon Moore, Keith Lewis has been in this starting lineup because they, they've kind of energized this entire defense. They're all making plays now. And the other thing is that Mike Nolan has simplified things for this defense. They're not trying to trick anybody. They're lining up, making sure that their guys understand exactly what to do, and it's paying off. Brandon Williams back to receive a squibber of a punt from Ryan Plackemeyer. Starts the return at the 24. And looking for a corner, run out of bounds at the 26-yard line. 
San Francisco's defense tightening up in November. No, no, I understand, sir. The problem is I don't have access to your records. Boy, okay. That's a really great question. I, I don't have the answer with me. No, you need to do that in person. It's on a different system. You sure you're a customer? It's not the 6500. Nope. But I ordered the 6500. That's not what this says. What can people do with the right software? Yes, ma'am. I've got all of your records in front of me. I can take care of it from here. For starters, keep the customer happy. Okay, looking good. Noel, with your good driving record and your son's good grades, I think we can save you a few hundred dollars. That's great. State Farm's got football fever. I never get used to that. You'll get it too. That was excellent. They love this time of year. To see how much you can save, call an agent or visit statefarm.com. Unstoppable. Michael Waltrip is. So is his Citizen Echo Drive. Fueled by light, it never needs a battery. It's unstoppable. Just like the people who wear it. Citizen Echo Drive watches. Unstoppable. Fox tonight. The Simpsons is so big it should only happen in Vermont. Experience the wildlife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fly off in a bee. New England will never be the same after an all-new Simpsons tonight on Fox. Fox Tuesday. Focus on my voice. He saved her life. It's okay. I'm gonna protect you. Now a victim is obsessed with him. I need you to help me. And this attraction could become fatal. Why are you talking to me like I'm the bad guy? Standoff. All new followed by House. Fox Tuesday. You were discretion advised. Check the throwback scene there. You know, the, the Niners tightening up defensively. The coach is wearing a suit, fired up today. And look at everybody paying attention. All eyes are on him paying attention. He's got the attention of these guys, and they're playing well. First down draw for Frank Gore. There has been plenty of success on that play call for San Francisco. A 20-yard gain on the ground. And a San Francisco first down. Tell you, this offensive line of the Niners, watch them inside. Great hole, pushing everybody down. Moore and Norris, the fullback, he leads up through there. Then you also have Arnez Battle, the wide receiver, coming down, cracking on Ken Hamlin. That's all a guy like Frank Gore needs to jump through that hole and turn it into a big game. So just seven days after a team rushing record, 148 yards in the first half in Detroit, Gore with 93 in the first half today. Play action to Michael Robinson. Arnest Battle is there for the swing out reception with a convoy ahead, and Battle is tackled out of bounds at the 31-yard line by Leroy Hill. Let's check in once again in Los Angeles. A game break with Chris Rhodes. All right, Matt, like Seattle, Philly's going to have to use its backup quarterback, but now for the rest of the season. The Associated Press reporting Donovan McNabb torn ACL in his right knee. He is done. Of course, the Eagles lost today to Tennessee. Jeff Garcia will replace him for the 5-5 five and five Eagles. Back to Matt, J.C., and Chris. Chris, thanks. A little 49 parallel there with Garcia taking over quarterback and using horrible news for Eagle fans. And on motion at the line of scrimmage, Russell Davis was a little froggy. We'll see if he was drawn or not. Encroachment, defense number 95. Five-yard penalty, still first down. It's been kind of a rough day for quarterbacks elsewhere too, J.C. Brett Favre was knocked out of the game earlier today, and uh, it's it's one of those weird week 11s where things happen in bunches. It is, and obviously we talked last week about teams wanting to get after the quarterback more, especially when you get a guy out on the run when you can take a shot legally on him. You know, defenses they're they're trying to the best way to stop an offense is to take away the general, and that's generally the the quarterback. We'll have all the information on the early games on the Visa Halftime Show coming up today. Gore back in the game and with another great scene behind that great left side of the line inside the five. And look at those offensive linemen down there. Those guys are fired up. Larry Allen, Jonas Jennings, those guys are fired up and playing. This is just a simple trap play. You can see they're high-fiving. They're just going to come and they're going to trap here. 
and watch Grant Wistrom. He's going to get penetration, but watch Frank Gore make him miss. Right there, he makes him miss. Smiley's out there leading the play. Morin Norris is leading the play. And right now, the Niners up front just taking it to the Seahawks. Frank Gore has tied a 49ers rushing record for 100 yard games in a season. This is Michael Robinson down near the goal line. You know, it's been talked about a lot up here, the fact that this 49ers offensive line loves to work in front of Frank Gore. We talked to Alex Smith about it on Friday, and he said it's not fiction. They absolutely adore this guy. And look at first down. San Francisco's averaging 14 yards on first down. I mean, that's ridiculous. So they just keep getting first downs. If you can do that, you never have a second or a third down. You just keep getting first downs all the way down the field. Second and goal. It's Robinson again in the backfield behind Moore Norris. Alex on the boot with a corner. Out of bounds at the goal line. No. Signal on the field yet, though the 49ers are celebrating as though Alex has the TD and indeed touchdown San Francisco. And I talked earlier about Alex Smith and, and his ability to run with the football. He did a great job of that in college. That's what helped him be the number one pick for the 49ers. And now they run the boot. They're killing him on the run with Frank Gore. Now they just run the, the boot. They fake it to Frank Gore, Michael Robinson, and now he runs around the corner for a touchdown. This is really some kind of day so far, some kind of half for San Francisco as they have bucked a number of trends. <laughs> I mean, only Houston had scored fewer second quarter points than the Niners. They're on the board for two touchdowns in the second quarter here this afternoon. Frank Gore running wild. And Alex Smith with his first rushing touchdown of the year. Y'all ready to order? Two hundred and fifty-three straight days at the gym to get this body, and you're not gonna watch me on Direct TV HD. You're just not gonna get the best picture out of some fancy big screen TV without Direct TV. It's broadcast in 1080i. I totally don't know what that means, but I want it. For picture quality that beats cable, you've got to get Direct TV. This is Gary Poole, married for 10 years but didn't know it until he had fresh brewed premium roast coffee and a McGriddles. It was like he was seeing his wife for the very first time. It's like we're newlyweds all over again. Wake up and smell your life. Look at Jonas Jennings right there. He is ready to play. He is fired up. When you see a guy doing that, he's just rocking. He's in his, in, in his zone. He is ready to go. Look at him on the field. That's why this entire 49ers team is taking it to the Seahawks. You think he's he's complacent? He's ready to get back out there on the field and hit somebody else in the mouth. He's got that imaginary Leo Mazzoni uh, iPod in his head. That, that's called feeling it right there. When you get a guy in that zone, he's feeling it. Kick comes out to the 25-yard line as uh, Jonas Jennings has a little time to sit. He and Larry Allen have been blowing people up the last couple of weeks for San Francisco. He wants to get right back out there with that oven mitt on his left hand and go back to work. 408 left in the half. That feeling right there is the feeling that you miss once you stop playing football. You can't get that kind of feeling, that intensity, that 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 just ready to go. Anything else you do except football. First and ten for Seneca Wallace going through his progressions and finding a wide open tight end. Jeremy Stevens who fumbles the football. Keith Lewis in the right place at the right time again. One mistake after another for the Seahawks. And it started with the opening drive. Jumping off sides, throwing the interceptions by Seneca Wallace. The punt return by Nate Burleson, and it just continued to snowball. San Francisco's taking advantage of every one of them. 
We're going to see Jeremy Stevens. He's going to come sit down in the zone right here. Now the ball's just going to get punched out. You see right there. You see Roman right there with that right hand just knocks that ball out of his hands. Sloppy ball handling. Another mental error. You got to take care of the football. The third Seahawks turnover of the half. And the 10th forced by San Francisco in the last two and a half weeks. Double reverse. Razzle dazzle Arnez battle. <laughs> I love it. They are feeling it down there, and that's exactly the way you play. You just let it loose. You got a defense on its heels like Seattle is right now. You can do all these kinds of things. Double reverses, the bootlegs, everything seems to work. Right now, that's time they run the double reverse north turner up top I'm sure he's just got his entire play sheet out right now what else can i call because everything seems to be working and they got 12 yards on that play another san francisco first down they have already out first downed their entire output in their last meeting with seattle last season Gore looking for help behind the left side, and this time he's stuck in the middle of the field. Bryce Fisher was there on the stop. And you know, Matt, when we talked to, to Mike Nolan, he said he, he really didn't know how his team was going to come out and play. They won two games in a row, and he said, that's a streak. What I want is consistency. He said they practice well every week, but right now they just don't have personnel-wise the talent just to, to go out and beat people week in and week out. He didn't know how they were going to respond, but I'll tell you what, they responded very well, and those guys, they understand what it takes to win, I think, now out here in San Francisco. Well, getting back to the ball control story, San Francisco really won the time of possession battle in Detroit last week, and they're doing it at home here against Seattle today. The delayed draw, Frank Gore dancing through holes and tackled at the 11-yard line with some malice. Kelly Herndon got in there from the corner. That'll be the final play before the two-minute warning here in San Francisco. It has been all 49ers to start the afternoon. Thinking upset against the defending NFC champs. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by the new AT&T. Your world delivered. The German word for safe is Sicher. The Portuguese word for firewall is Muro de Fogo. The Chinese word for password is Mima. My company is in 17 countries now, and I can say secure in every one of them. Dynamic networking from AT&T identifies security threats before their problems, so Jane's confidence grows right alongside her company. The new AT&T, your world. perfect gift you know it shop sales diamond bracelets and save up to one thousand dollars like our one carat just 4.99 each or our three carat just 14.99 each find the perfect gift at sales the diamond store two minute warning in san francisco it is a stunned seattle seahawks sideline even without matt hasselbeck and you can see it in the body language of the Seahawks. On the other side, the 49ers have been fired up from the opening gun at J.C. Maddock. Mike Holmgren can't wait to get into the locker room at halftime and address the defending NFC champions. Yeah, I, I wish we could get in there and hear what he has to say because it is going to be fire and brimstone. I guarantee you he is going to let those guys have it. I would imagine one of the things is let's not turn over the football anymore, guys, huh? I mean, they have gift-wrapped the first half for San Francisco so far this afternoon. And the Niners are knocking on the door again, third and two from the 12. 
Frank Gore, against whom nobody has had any success, down to the five. It's going to start when you when you address things at halftime. If you're Seattle, it, how do you stop Frank Gore? Well, this offensive line is absolutely taking it to him. Big Larry Allen, watch him, number 71. He's going to get out and lead as well as Justin Smiley. But you've got big number 71. Watch him. That's a big man getting out in front as well as Justin Smiley. They cut off the edge, allow Frank Gore to get up the field. But those guys, they're firing off, pushing Seattle off the ball as well as getting to the corner. Michael Robinson in the backfield. Myra Smith behind Moore Norris in the out. And the hand goes to the rookie out of Penn State. He bounces off a tackle and is finally taken down by Jordan Babino. And a flag on the play. Holding offense, number 83. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. They get on his battle on a holding call. Frank Gore today is averaging over nine yards a carry. You know, at the start of the afternoon, he was responsible for more of his offense than anybody else in the NFL outside of Larry Johnson. Right, and, and that includes Tiki Barber, LaDainian Tomlinson, all those guys. Frank Gore counts for 40% coming into this game of the team's total yards. He's a big-time player for him. Still first and goal from the 15 now as the penalty marches San Francisco back. Gore again waiting patiently for the left side of the line. No, that's Michael Robinson. Robinson taking the pile with him inside the 10. Clock ticking under a minute left in the half. Again, we remind you the Visa halftime report is coming up as soon as we go to halftime here. Kurt, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy have all the scores and highlights from around the league. The Fox Sports ticker keeps you updated with up to the second stats. How about Carson Palmer and Drew Brees combining for 800 passing yards today? And how about the BCS standing? That's what everybody's curious about. Everybody wants to see. Smith on the play action looks into the corner, and there was no Montana to Clark play there to be found. Brian Gilmore, the intended target. That shows you some of the maturity of Alex Smith. Don't force the ball into coverage. They're in field goal range. They're going to probably get three points out of it. Let's not try to force it in there, get the ball intercepted. Just throw it away. If it's not there, throw it away. You line up and you play again. That's one of those hard lessons that uh, Alex certainly has learned in his second year. Last year, one TD, 11 picks. This here so much more success as we talked about at the start of the telecast and what Mike told Mike Nolan told him last week is hey Alex you don't have to win the game for us just don't lose it and that's what he's doing today on third and still a goal situation a timeout 23 seconds left can the Niners punch it in again do you remember when we learned that too much of anything isn't good Well, let's apply that lesson to enjoying Guinness. Apply previously learned lessons of moderation to drinking Guinness. Brilliant! Please enjoy Guinness Draft responsibly. 23 seconds left in the half. It's been all 49ers. 17-0 San Francisco aided and abetted by three Seattle turnovers. We remind you to stay with us at half again. Not only do we have the Visa halftime report, but the 49ers will pay tribute to one of their all-time greats, Jerry Rice. Chris Myers will have a conversation with the most prolific receiver in NFL history. Third and goal. Smith looking for a target complete to Arnes. Battle touchdown, San Francisco. Stunned in Seattle. The second time this afternoon, Smith and Battle have hooked up for a touchdown strike. I had a 
flag on the play as well. No, I think they're they might be uh, looking at the spot. It might have been a challenge there. You can see on the replay, battle just underneath that zone, and then he just catches it and turns it up. That's a touchdown. And he's, yeah, friend. he's in he's in the end zone. If there was a flag, it uh, it came from the booth. Yeah, within two minutes, it comes from up top. So it, it didn't come from Mike Holmgren. It comes from the booth up top any, any time it's inside of two minutes. Well, I would imagine, based on our looks here, that that's going to be a pretty quick review. <laughs> but again, we talked about Alex Smith earlier not forcing the ball. That time, they just clear out. And Arnez Battle, you can see him. He just stops underneath the zone. Seattle guys are too deep. Trufant's too deep. Leroy Hill is too deep. They allow Battle just to catch the ball and turn up the field, and he gets it just enough to get into the end zone. Look at that number 83. Somewhere in the world, Ronaldo Le Nehemiah might be watching this game <laughs> saying, he's doing my number justice. Yeah, but 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 <laughs> the other thing about Nehemiah is when we asked on his battle, did he know who Nehemiah was? He was like, who's that? I've never heard of the guy. <laughs> so I guess it's good and bad, huh? Boy, the former Fighting Irish signal caller having a big afternoon here at home today. And what a good kid to talk to. Very, very smart, intelligent kid, hard worker, playing with a with a broken bone in his left hand. He's gonna have to have surgery on Monday and get a screw put in that hand, but there's no pain today for him. See after that catch. Watch where his knee comes down. See, it, it looks to me like that ball's already across the plane, but it's, it's kind of tough to tell. Yeah, this might take a little longer than we originally thought. See, his knee is down there, and the ball, there's the goal line. Looks like that ball's breaking the plane there. That's, that's close. And in order to overturn it, you've got to have conclusive, conclusive evidence that that ball was not breaking the plane when that knee came down, and I haven't seen anything saying that as of yet but this is the kind of afternoon that reminds folks of the 1980s here in San Francisco some of the luminaries are here Ronnie Lott speaking of the 80s huh Roger Craig is here all the old guys Jerry Rice Bill Walsh is here is there a Lenville Elliott sighting in the house let's go old school after reviewing the play the runner was down just barely short of the goal line by about two inches. Oh my. We're going to put the ball in play just short of the goal line on this hash mark and wind the clock. Larry Nemers with the just barely short vernacular here yeah, this afternoon. By two inches. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It looks like he was in to me. I, two inches. I guess my, my eyes aren't good enough to... Uh, to really judge inches. I can judge yards, but not inches. Arnes <laughs> battled denied his first ever multiple touchdown afternoon in the NFL with a whole half still to come. 18 seconds left on the clock. And Coach Nolan will play it safe with Joe Nedney, much to the chagrin of the 49er faithful. Wow, that's surprising to me. Nedney has never missed from this distance. And he stays true, but boy, with the success the 49ers had running the football in the first half, you'd think fourth and inches at the goal line would have been an academic punch in. With the timeout, they still had a timeout run. The end of the first half, San Francisco on top, 20 nothing. Stay tuned for the Visa Halftime Report with Kurt, Howie, Jimmy, and Terry right after these messages. All 49ers in the first half here this afternoon. Boy, it's still a three-touchdown deficit for Seattle. As that last-second decision to kick on fourth and inches went from 24-0 to 20-0 Niners. And I think when things are rolling that well, you've got all the momentum. you got to go for it there. you got to make it even tougher. Stay tuned. The Visa Halftime Report is coming up next. 20-0 Niners at halftime. NFL Thanksgiving Day special. The guys head to Dallas for football's greatest holiday tradition. T 
Geo and the Cowboys need a win to keep pace in the East against Cadillac and the Bucks. It's a Fox NFL Thanksgiving Day special in HD. Be there live for the first show that breaks down the new BCS standings, the official BCS rating show, this weekend on FSN. You are watching NFL Sunday Ticket. Get a Volkswagen and receive a custom first act guitar. Plug into the stereo and make your V-dub rock. This Amplify has airbags. I'm all right. Right now, get a 2007 Jetta starting at just 16490. Once upon a time, there was this idea. One of those proverbial big ideas. An idea so big that it needed help making the leap between possibility and reality. This big idea, it's your idea. Now who's gonna help you make it real? Multiply your possibilities. I can give you what you Introducing Intel Core 2 Duo, the world's best processors. Playing this month on the 101, the legendary Rod Stewart. In a DirecTV exclusive, Rod performs songs from his number one album, Still the Same. Great rock classics of our time. <laughs> Presented by DirecTV and Control Room, the one and only Rod Stewart. In concert this month, only on the 101. The Visa Halftime Report is sponsored by Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Life Takes Visa. Coming to you from the Meadowlands, Kurt Menefee, Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, and Jimmy Johnson as we get ready to continue wrapping up Week 11. And how about those 49ers on the verge of winning three straight if they can hold on, leading Seattle by 20 at halftime. The Arizona Cardinals trying to end an eight-game losing streak. They're up 10-0 on the Lions. And the Colts and Cowboys nearing halftime with no score. In Carolina... All right, smiling Steve Smith, why not? Watch this catch, folks. Jake Long, quarterback, drops back. Corners running stride for stride with Steve Smith. Smart throw, under throw. And who has the advantage? The wide receiver, Smith, the makes the adjustment. 62-yard touchdown reception. 10 to nothing. The <coughs> Panthers going to win 15 to nothing over the St. Louis Rams. Ray Lewis firing his old troops up. Watch it. B.J. Sam. Sams takes this putt. Goes to the left, Kurt. Watch this, Kurt. Back to the right, Kurt. Up the middle. See this spin move on the old dance floor. Turn it on, young man. B.J. Sams takes this putt back. 59 yards. Finally, he goes down. Right there, he goes down. Led to Jamal Lewis. Touchdown not shown. 7-3 Atlanta. And then Jamal Lewis in from 16 yards out. And the Ravens take this game away from the Atlanta Falcons. Your final. 24 to 10. Fourth straight win for the Ravens. Third straight loss for the Falcon. Marcus Colts, an outstanding young rookie, <laughs> carted off the field, injured left ankle, did not play in the remaining parts of this game. Watches as though Carson Palmer adjustment. Nice job. Chad Johnson threw his hand up, broke his right off, went downfield. 60 yard touchdown. It's 17 to 10 Cincinnati. And then Palmer, four yard in route to Chad Johnson. Three touchdown passes on the day for Palmer. There is your final 31 to 16 Bengals over the same. Rex Grossman, Bears coming in the middle end. Played the Giants here. They won. Came back, played the Giants. Little quick hitch, corner played off. Little hitch in front of him. That's Mark Bradley. Turn on the speed, young man. 57 yard touchdown. Bears take their record to 9 and 1, win this football game 10 to nothing over the New York Jets. First time since 1990, they've been 9 and 1. Tom Brady, some question what's going on with Tom Brady. There's nothing wrong with Tom Brady. Look down the middle of the field, Tom. Why? 
wide open. There he is, Rache Caldwell, touchdown, 54-yarder, 21 to nothing at this point, New England over Green Bay. Then Brett Favre injured his right elbow on this play, had to leave this football game, did not return. Brady, three touchdown passes on the day as the Patriots take this game 35 to nothing over the Green Bay Packers. Packers shut out for the second time at Lambeau for the first time ever, guys. Miami has won it three straight. Tampa Bay, they get back in their winning ways, knocking off Washington. Right. Bad news in Philadelphia, though. Yeah, Tennessee. Tennessee's Albert Hainsworth back after suspension. Watches Donna McNabb rolling right, falls awkwardly <laughs> on his knee. Torn ACL in his right knee out for the remaining part of the season. 7-3 at this point. It is Tennessee over Philadelphia. And then Travis Henry takes it up inside, bounces to the outside. 70-yard touchdown run, 31-13. Tennessee on the road takes care of Philadelphia. Tennessee takes our record to 3 and 7. Yeah, but not only do the Eagles lose that game, the fourth of the last five, they lose McNabb for the year. <laughs> Jeff Garcia will be their quarterback from this day forward. The Kansas City Chiefs come back and knock off Howie's Raiders, 17-13. Lee Evans, a career-high 265 yards receiving, and the Bills squeak one out over the Texans. And despite three interceptions by Ben Roethlisberger, the Pittsburgh Steelers wind up beating the Cleveland Browns 24-20. And here's a note at the brand new BCS standings, Ohio State still number one. Michigan holds on to the number two spot to seven one thousandths of a point ahead of USC. Florida and Notre Dame round out the top five. Here's a look at the rest of the top 20. The really key note in this one is that Boise State keeps on rolling. They're now 11 and 0 and holding on to that number 11 spot. But guys, any surprise in the fact that Michigan is still the number two team and does this open the door for them to play uh, Ohio State again? Well, they're number two, but barely, you know, by a fraction over Southern Cal. And, and I really believe if Southern Cal wins out, if they beat Notre Dame and UCLA, they will be in the championship game. But, you know, a lot of people are saying Michigan is the second best team in the country. They ought to be playing Ohio State. I don't believe that <laughs> way. You know, I think somebody new has got to jump in there. I, they've all, Michigan has lost to Ohio State. Let's go Florida. Let's go Arkansas. Let's go Southern Cal or Notre Dame. All right, keep in mind that Thursday we will be in Dallas for a thank you. I'm playing. You know I'm playing. I'm playing. Believe it, I'm playing. Yeah, I'm playing. This Thanksgiving, Woo! there's a new tradition. Three NFL games. Halftime in San Francisco, where the underdog 49ers are two quarters away from getting within a game of first place in the West. As Jerry Rice officially retires as a 49er today, he'll talk to our Chris Myers when we come back. The biggest race in the world is back. NASCAR returns to Fox with the Daytona 500. February 2007. NFL Sunday Ticket, brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Passion for excellence. All across the country, fans are seeing football in a whole new way. With unprecedented access to the NFL, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, fans have made NFL Network one of the fastest growing networks in television history. This Thanksgiving, join us for the network's premiere of Thursday Night Football. A new tradition begins at the place football season never ends.
like the all-new Nitro, equipped with a Sirius satellite radio, and you'll get a 12-month subscription to the best radio on radio. your possibilities introducing intel core 2 duo the world's best processors you don't have to tell lj what denver kansas city means john and champ they know all about it herm he knows pat bowen you better believe it but since it's nfl network season premiere of thursday night football we just thought we'd remind you Thursday night football kicks off Thanksgiving night when the Denver Broncos battle the Kansas City Chiefs. Broncos Chiefs, Thanksgiving night on NFL Network. in NFL history, Jerry Rice officially retiring as a 49er at halftime this afternoon with the home team up 20-0 at half. And just seconds ago, on the request of Jerry Rice, he received one final pass from Steve Young. Among the many 49er greats here to pay their respects to the most prolific receiver in NFL history. <laughs> How many times have we seen that? It you know, I had the honor, I can say that now, the honor to play against Jerry Rice. And, you know, he's the greatest player, I think, to play in the NFL. To, to think of all the things that he did and accomplished from the wide receiver position. It's not like they handed him the ball every play as a running back. He did it from a wide receiver position, the greatest player of all time. And a real outpouring of love here in San Francisco. Standing by with Jerry Rice is our Chris Myers. In the middle of all this, with his family, we're going to have yeah. to move along the field. But okay. first of all, congratulations. Why was it important, Jerry, for you to retire as a 49er? Because this is where my legacy is at. Here with the 49ers. And uh, I have so many great memories here. And just to come back here uh, and say goodbye to the fans the right way, that was the most important thing. There was a lot of emotion. I've heard a lot of people describe what made you great in a sentence or two. Why, why do you think you made it to the top? I think because the reason why I had so much success is because I love the game and I felt I owed the fans whenever I stepped on the football field and these are the guys that paid the big bucks and I wanted them to be able to walk away with something special when they left the ballpark and uh, great seeing Bill Walsh here Eddie DeBartolo memories what's your greatest memory your great. greatest memory great you know Bill Walsh is uh, the genius uh, George Seifert, excellent coach also. The Andy DeBarlo, one of the best owners. Thanks for all the memories, Jerry. Appreciate it. They got a game to play. Jerry excited that these 49ers, Matt and JC, are leading at halftime. Chris, thanks. And, I, you know, you got to go out and think that this has been one of the most emotional afternoons in San Francisco football speaking in quite some time. The Niners lead 20-0. This place went nuts when Jerry Rice and the rest of those legends were introduced at halftime. It's been a fun afternoon so far. It really has. And they're playing like the 49ers of old right now. So whether they're inspired because of the Jerry Rice and all the other guys coming back, I don't know. But we'll see if they can keep it up the second half. A handful of years in Oakland, a season with the Seattle Seahawks. But Jerry Rice will forever be remembered as a San Francisco 49er among the records that he still holds receptions receiving yards touchdowns 38 records altogether in the hall of fame career of number 80 jerry rice did you see that 22,845 receiving yards that is crazy that that is just absolutely crazy to think of all the things that jerry rice was able to accomplish as i said as a wide receiver you know folks up in the pacific northwest right now are probably 
screaming at the television set saying that's enough and to pay uh, to pay the uh, the proper fairness to the other side the Seattle Seahawks today have been shut out in the first half for the first time since December 7th 2003 <laughs> is that fair <laughs> is that fairness to throw that stat out well as, as <laughs> thoroughly outplayed as they were it's a 20 nothing deficit Josh Stoby receives the kick to start the second half and he's tackled at the 32 yard line the first half numbers is one would imagine very much in favor of the home standing 49ers look at the time of possession we talked about them having to control the ball they almost double the time of possession that the Seahawks have and then when the Seahawks did have the ball they didn't do anything with it only 96 total yards in that first half so thorough domination thorough domination by the 49ers for the latest in fantasy stats log on to foxsports.com if you decided to start uh, one of the uh, one of the tailbacks in the Seattle uniform today you've been a little disappointed this has been Frank Gore's show on the road or on the ground rather Sean Alexander had nine first half carries his first here in the second half looks a lot like the uh, the previous nine you know and I was going to ask you this when we started this thing JC it's not as though Sean Alexander even though he is the reigning NFL MVP is going to be able to just you know hit the ground running here no not at all because you have to figure that he hasn't practiced he practiced this week so his timing is going to be off we talked about his conditioning things of that nature you can't simulate a game in practice so it's going to take him a while Wallace's pass is caught by DJ Hackett his second reception of the afternoon I mean knocked down Brian Gilmore upon being tackled on the 49ers sideline What they've got to do is, is they've got to get Seneca Wallace into this ball game. He's thrown some, some bad passes early. Get him to the edge. We just saw him roll out there. Give him an option to run to make some plays with his legs if there's nobody open down the field. After the first down reception, Alexander has a corner this time. And another first down for the Seahawks as he's tackled at the 40-yard line. Well, the first half did not play out well for the visiting Seahawks. They turned it over three times, all of which led to points. Keith Lewis was in the middle of it for San Francisco. Walt Harris had a pick. On his battle with a touchdown reception, he was denied a second after the booth review. This was the Jeremy Stevens fumble. Keith Lewis has been in the right place at the right time for the last few weeks. Alexander again looking between the tackles and stuff after a gain of maybe a yard by Bryant Young. Points off turnovers, Mr. Pearson. That's been the story today. And, and that's the story every week. Whenever we talk to these coaches, they always talk about turning the ball over, and it's so hard to win on the road if you turn the ball over. And today you can see Seattle's gotten three turnovers, 13 points have come off of it. Alexander picked up two on the ground. The quick pass is caught by Dion Branch, and there's nobody home. Touchdown, Seahawks, just like that. A 38-yard touchdown strike to Dion Branch. And I'm sure that talk in the, in the locker room by Mike Holmgren got these guys awake. He's got their attention. They came out. That's how you want to come out. First drive out of the locker room after a sluggish first half. You want to take the ball all the way down the field, get into the end zone, get back in this ball game. Five plays, 68 yards on the drive. Josh Brown. And his first chance to put up a point is good. How about this for bad news for San Francisco? When Deion Branch catches a touchdown pass. His teams are 16 and 2. Southwest Airlines now has more non-stop flights from coast to coast than ever before. You are now free to move about the country. Disciplined investing. 
It isn't about star fund managers. At zero price, it's about experienced investment teams that stay the course. For each one five and 10 year period, over 70% of our mutual funds beat their Lipper average. Low cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. Super Duty, the most capable pickup in America. Bold moves, they happen every day. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 41. By T. Rowe Price, mutual funds, IRAs, college savings, invest with confidence. By Miller Lite, for great taste, there's no debate. Miller Lite, always a good call. And by Ford F-Series, built for bold moves, built Ford Tough. Well, in order for the uh, the San Francisco treat to be fed to the visiting Seahawks, they're going to have to come from behind and uh, already a quick touchdown to start the second half. And I said that's how Mike Holmgren wanted the Seahawks to come out that first drive. But San Francisco, they can't relax. They played well that first half. They've got to maintain that intensity. Brandon Williams up the middle of the field and finally tackled shy of the 35 yard line. Good field position for San Francisco for their first possession of the second half. And before that, we check in on the field with Chris Myers. Hey, I, I can't repeat the way uh, Mike Holmgren told his team to pick it up at halftime. He, he did guarantee they play with more emotion. I think we've already seen that. He's not replacing or thinking about replacing Seneca Wallace. He said that Sean Alexander is fine. Meanwhile, the head coach of the 49ers, Mike Nolan, saying he's going to give it a Frank Gore in the second half. And on that field goal, instead of going for a touchdown at the end of the first half, he said, I want to take the safe points the way my defense is playing. And that's a decision that may come back to haunt Mike Nolan. Yeah, I don't I don't really agree with that. They had the momentum there. They were blowing it. Seahawks off the line of scrimmage. You got to score. Smith checks it down to Frank Gore, and they turn it into a gain of six yards. You know, Matt, they, they needed two inches. Two inches to get into the end zone. You've got to play to win, especially when you have a team that it's not accustomed to winning. You're trying to establish an identity. He didn't know what this team was going to give him. You've got to give them the confidence, show them the confidence that you believe in them. We can get two inches anytime we need it to get into the end zone. It may come back to haunt them. Well, the way the left side of the line is held up for San Francisco today, and Mike Nolan most likely confident that they can continue that kind of success on the ground in particular. Frank Gore with 130 first half rushing yards. The pitch is to Frank Gore. This time he's met for little or no gain. For an update in Los Angeles, let's check in with Chris Rose. All right, Matt. Matt Leiner, 37 and 2 as a starter at USC, but winless in five starts in the pros. That's because he's not running enough. Get in there. And the Cardinals trying to snap an eight-game skid. They're up 17 zip on the Lions. Kind of a weak spike here, though. Matt, JC, Chris, back to you. <laughs> yeah. Chris, I, I, I know why he doesn't run a lot. Did you see how fast or how slow he was running there? Well, he's Reggie Bush <laughs> pushing him from behind. Wow. Third and three for San Francisco. Time for Alex. Not time enough to avoid the rush of Chuck Darby, who had a pair of sacks last week. Now you see that Seahawks, that talk at halftime has got those guys inspired. They're playing a lot faster, showing some intensity inside. Here's Chuck Darby. He's going to end up getting the sack. Look at Alex Smith. Right there, just not a lot of time to throw. Look at this twist. Chuck Darby just comes outside, beats Larry Allen with his quickness. Nate Burleson starts the return at the 25-yard line. And around that same left side that he broke one against last week, tackled at the 42 by Michael Robinson. Good field position for Seattle once again. You 
GPS, covering more of Europe before noon than anyone. UPS, covering more ground faster than ever. Football fans have become too reliant on one sign. So what do we come up with? Ba, lock, da, um. <laughs> sure, laugh. I propose you use nickel when you need five defensive backs or dime when you need six. Well, I think it's about time we showed a little love to offense. Offense. Let's issue a continuance on the defense to give the offense a tryout this yeah. season. Mama. For great taste, there's no debate. Miller Lite. Michael, let's go a little Links. Good. So you couldn't find a car you like here in Germany? No. I couldn't find a speed limit I liked in America. Jake Plummer and the Broncos head to Kansas City to battle Larry Johnson and the Chiefs. Thursday night football premieres with Broncos Chiefs Thanksgiving night on NFL Network. Fox NFL Sunday, sponsored by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Well, the first three and out of the entire afternoon. And subsequent punt has given Seneca Wallace and the Seahawks very good field position to start their second drive of the second half. Alexander in the backfield with him. Play action. Heads up as Brian Young was in his grill, but the pass is caught by Daryl Jackson. Shante Spencer had coverage for San Francisco. Much better decisions by Seneca Wallace, even though he gets the pressure immediately by Brian Young. He doesn't panic. He just pulls up and he throws the ball to Daryl Jackson. Get the ball into a guy's hands that can make a play for you quickly. Now Daryl Jackson has an opportunity, even though he doesn't do it here, to make the guy miss. Jackson's first reception of the afternoon. Sean Alexander met for a loss once again. Brandon Moore. Defensive player of the week a couple of weeks ago with his big game against Minnesota. Nine tackles last week at Detroit. Brandon Moore read this very well. You can see he doesn't get fooled by the influence blocks. The lineman going the opposite way. He reads what he's supposed to read and he comes up the field maintaining his leverage outside and tackles Alexander. I tell you, you mentioned it earlier. If Brandon Moore feels like his reads are a little late. <laughs> you have a tough time selling that to us. <laughs> At least today, he's right on top of it. So third and ten now for Wallace. And that pass is batted down, threw it into double coverage. Shante Spencer denied Nate Burleson. That's an instance where Seneca Wallace has got to pull the ball down and run. Mike Holmgren encourages him to pull it down and run when things aren't there. You know, and Seneca wants to prove that he's a pocket passer. You can see he's got protection here, but nobody's open. Pull it down and run. He's got a huge lane there that he can pull the ball down and take off, make a big play with his legs. Brandon Williams, the deep man again. As Blackemeyer's punt will get inside the five and into the end zone. Back to back, three and outs. payload outside and a ton of comfort inside what are you doing you trashing my truck you serious sorry Ford f-150 treated right why am I a Dell customer because they design solutions around the apps that I use to manage my customers not around the solution Dell wants to sell. Everything's more open and easier to manage. So Dell doesn't lock me in. They set me free to grow. 
Dell PowerEdge 2950 servers feature the reliability of dual-core Intel Xeon processors. It's your enterprise, so every Dell solution is purely you. The 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper add up to so much taste. 23 is always on the tip of your tongue. And so, at the end of the 23... Third quarter, it's all tied up, 23-23. X is the square root of Y, true or false? Karen. 23? Dr. Pepper. With 23 flavors and one mind-blowing taste, there's more to it. Fox Tuesday at 9, 8 central. A patient with no options. Is he gonna die? And a doctor will stop at nothing to save him. This test isn't exactly FDA approved. You committed a crime! Do something! New house after standoff. Fox Tuesday. Viewer discretion advised. Been a big afternoon for the San Francisco offense. Alex Smith has been efficient. Arnaz Battle's been a favorite target, but Frank Gore has been the guy. 130 yards today. That gives him a total of almost 300 yards in his last week and a half. 49ers started at the 20, and why not? That started with Frank Gore, who again breaks one up the middle. There he goes again! Frank Gore down the sideline! Marcus Trufant saved the day for Seattle. Gonna have to get that guy some oxygen. He is putting in some work today. Frank Gore again, and watch the missed tackle. But a great trap bot by Smiley. Allows Frank Gore just to jump up through there. Now he's off to the races. Missed tackles. Look at Mike Holmgren. Look at him. Missed tackles. Not being where he's supposed to be. And it's happened all day long. Boy, and the San Francisco native Mike Holmgren is furious on the sideline this afternoon. Maurice Hicks gives Gore a puffer. He has success around the corner. Kelly Herndon knocked him out of bounds well with the enormous afternoon for Frank Gore 180 yards today he's gone over or at the 1,000 rushing yard mark and remember when we talked to him he that was a big goal for him because he hadn't done that since high school he hadn't gone over a thousand yards in a season since high school and that was big for him he's already done it here early in the season he still goes back and watches all those high school highlights to get, get him hyped up for the game. Smith's pass is caught by Antonio Bryant for a first down. He's upended at the 18-yard line. You know, we talked about Frank Gore being kind of a below-the-radar draft choice in 2005. Ronnie Brown, Cadillac Williams. Cedric Benson, all these guys taken before Frank Gore. And the thing about Frank Gore that I love is how tough he runs. You see him break tackles. The first guy very rarely brings him down. You can see even down in the secondary, he's going to make a guy miss. At the line of scrimmage, he's strong enough to run through some guys, and then he's got some speed. Also, once he breaks through that initial wave, to, to run away from guys in the secondary. First and 10 of the Seattle 18-yard line. Gore again dancing behind that capable left side of the line. And for an update in Los Angeles, let's check in once again with Chris Rose. All right, Matt, another TD toss for Peyton Manning, but this one to the enemy. Little tip. Second-year player out of Tennessee, just like Peyton Manning, so they're going to have a lot to talk about at the alumni game. Cowboys and Colts tied at seven. By the way, you can see Dallas play Thanksgiving Day on Fox against Tampa Bay. Back to Matt, JC, and Chris. Nicely done, Mr. Rose. Get, <laughs> that, get that Thanksgiving Day in. That's big. <laughs> it is a Thanksgiving tradition. Second and five now. Gore again, and this time the Seahawks are there to answer the call. You know, Matt, we talked about how Frank Gore just loves to play football and how after last year when they were losing, it hurt him so much that guys were outside and music was blasting that he just started crying and called home and, you know, said it really hurts him. He just wants to win it. And, and after every game now, he calls the head coach, calls Mike Nolan on his cell phone to, to ask the coach, 
What can I do better? What did I do well? What didn't I do very well? He doesn't want to wait until Monday's film session. He calls him after the game. Well, he's going to grade out okay today, I would say. Third and five now. More misdirection. Julian Peterson trying to run Smith down, and he finally forces him to throw it out of bounds. So again, San Francisco gets close. They're denied the touchdown, and it'll be Joe Nedney time once again. That's why at the end of that first half, I was saying that they needed to go and try to get a touchdown. You, if you continue to, to kick field goals when you get into the red zone and not get into the end zone, sooner or later that can come back to haunt you. And like I said, with a young team that you want to build confidence in, you got to give them that opportunity. Here they got to settle for three again. Joe Nedney was four for four at Detroit last weekend, and this one is no good. Well, they don't settle for three. They get zero. It looked like somebody got a piece of that at the line for the Seahawks. Craig Terrell, the guitar playing tackle, celebrating the SWAT. Super Duty, the most capable pickup in America. Bold moves, they happen every day. When I want the last shot, when I know I've already made it. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Dell. Business solutions designed for one company in mind, yours, Dell. Field goal keeps the score 20 to 7 San Francisco. About six minutes left in the third quarter. Wallace back to work, and that pass is caught. Nate Burleson hanging on and staying in bounds a gain of six. And it was Craig Terrell inside that gets penetration, then gets his hands up right there. That big right hand, that's a huge block. That is a big block. And look at Seattle now. They're they're enthused. Those guys are motivated, and you can just kind of feel the momentum start to swing in the Seahawks' favor now. They called that a 30-yard attempt. First time Joe Nedney has ever missed at that distance. Alexander up the middle. And there to make the stop, combining a number of 49ers, including Isaac Sopoaga. Trying to get, get Alexander working. You're going to see Brandon Moore 56 sliding right there as well as Manny Lawson 99 is going to come in from the outside. I'll tell you, this 49ers defense, the last few weeks, they've really played much, much better. They haven't given up any big plays the last couple of weeks, and that's something that has killed them the first seven weeks was too many big plays. Alexander on first and ten, another couple yards. Alexander in his return so far this afternoon. Twelve carries, 
for uh, 28 yards, averaging just better than two yards a carry. Again, it's it's slow going even for a league MVP. Yeah, he's got to get his legs under him. He, you can see on that particular play that he loves to cut back so often. He's made so many big plays. That time he stumbled. He saw the hole backside, but when he tried to plant, his body just wasn't wasn't ready to go. After the last carry, Alexander at 32 yards. Here he is out of the backfield catching a pass and tackled at the 35-yard line. Shante Spencer was there to read it. Sean Alexander, his crack was right here. It was kind of right there, and it was at an angle. So it wasn't a straight crack it across. It was at an angle, and that's why it's been so tough to heal. And, and normally, a bone will heal from the outside in. Sean Alexander's bone is healing from the inside out. So it still has a slight crack on the outside that he's concerned about. Seattle just one of four on third down this afternoon, and that one out of reach for Daryl Jackson. But Mike Holmgren has seen far too much of Ryan Plackemeyer for his own tastes this afternoon as the punting unit comes on again. And you see the frustration right there. Here he is right here working against Walt Harris. Again, Walt Harris is going to let him get in front of him. He's just going to play under the receiver. That forces Seneca Wallace to have to throw the ball over Walt Harris, and it's too far. Plackemeyer on for his fourth punt of the afternoon. Brandon Williams, a return man for San Francisco. At the 13, he's going to bring it back. He splits a couple of tacklers and is finally taken down at the 18-yard line by Lance Lowry. Flag on the kick. personal foul on the return team for a late hit number 23. That penalty will be assessed half the distance from the end of the run. First down, San Francisco. Niners start the drive backed up toward their own goal line. If you're a man over 50, it's time to take the Avidart quiz. Are you always going? Do you have trouble going? Are you going, going, going at night? Maybe you think you have a going problem. But what if it's a growing problem? What if it's not your bladder, but instead you have an enlarging prostate? 50% of men over 50 do. And you may be able to do something about that going and growing with Avidar. Most medicines only treat symptoms. Avidar, with time, actually shrinks the prostate and improves urinary symptoms. Only your doctor can tell if your symptoms are from an enlarged prostate and not a more serious condition, such as prostate cancer. So have regular prostate exams. Avidar is for men only. Women should not take or handle Avidar due to the risk of a specific birth defect. Tell your doctor if you have liver disease. Rarely sexual side effects, tenderness, or swelling of the breast can occur. Have you called your doctor? Avidar, for your growing problem. What is it you want, Barry? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hmm. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, Barry. I'll take it. This holiday, let her know she's made your life wonderful with a diamond circle necklace from K Jewelers. And you can be assured of two things. Every diamond is hand-selected to match beautifully, and she'll absolutely love it. Am I talk talking too much? Yes. Why don't you kiss her instead of talking to her again? Every kiss begins with K. New on DVD. Dupree, live with us? Bring home Dupree. Nice! Just don't expect him to leave. The downstairs toilet is on the fritz again. You, me, and Dupree. Own it this Tuesday. The upset-minded 49ers trying to get to 500 and within a game of first place Seattle in the West. This is the third possession that they start at their own 10 or worse. Backed up after the penalty on the punt. 
And Frank Gore is met head on by Lofa Tatupu. Let's check in with Chris Myers. Critical situation for Alex Smith trying to manage this game. He has a tutor in Trent Dilfer who used to tutor when he was in Seattle, Matt Hasselbeck. And earlier this week, Smith said that Dilfer spends time away from his family to stay after and watch game film so I know what to look for. He also helps me with when to take risks in games and when not to and the difference. This is one of those situations where protecting the football and protecting the lead more important than getting more points. Well, Chris, thanks. And, uh, not the, uh, Alex Smith isn't the only quarterback that's in uniform today that's been helped out by Trent Dilfer. Eric Johnson makes the catch, ditches a couple of tacklers, and springs a first down. Finally brought down by Lofa to Tupu from behind at the 27. But again, just more missed tackles and bad tackling by the Seahawks. And that's something that's plagued them all season long. They thought that they had it corrected the last couple of weeks when they played well. But today it's shown up again. We've seen it all day long with Frank Gore, but now look, there's one, two, three, four white jerseys that misses them, and now there's only one guy, Lofa Tatupu, Tatupu making the tackle. First and 10 for San Francisco down. From the 36, play action. And Alex has the pass caught by Moore Norris. His fourth reception of the year results in very little. You know, going back to, to Chris's point about Trent Dilfer, you know, when we talked to Alex Smith, last year he didn't have a veteran presence in the film session. So he really didn't know what he was supposed to be looking at. And he said Trent Dilfer's really kind of clarified things for him and really not so much has told him what to do, but what not to do, which has been a big key for Alex Smith in, in turning down and in, in cutting down his turnovers. Same kind of thing that Trent Dilfer did for, for Matt Hasselbeck in Seattle. Second and eight now, Johnson in motion. Gore, more success running left, tackled at the 33. You know, Matt Hasselbeck told us yesterday that as much as he, uh, he appreciated Trent Dilfer when they were teammates, he appreciates him even more now with Dilfer being gone because it's Hasselbeck was playing the role of that quarterback's tutor to Seneca Wallace. Yeah, and that just comes with maturity. And the, the longer you're in the league, guys leave the league, they're traded or free agency or whatever, and now all of a sudden you find yourself being the veteran guy. And you got to try to treat the guys behind you the same way because you never know when they're going to have to go in and play. And like right now, for instance, Seneca Wallace has had to play four straight games. Third and four for San Francisco. Smith gets it passed off as he's hit and it's caught or is it Seahawks are saying no Arnest battle looked like he made a brilliant acrobatic catch but indeed it's incomplete Arnest battle lost his hat as it looked like he grabbed the football but not so almost a great catch by Arnest battle working on Jennings over there he just can't quite pull that ball in and that that is incomplete that ball hits the ground Arnez Battle, guy still learning how to play the wide receiver position. Still learning how to run routes, still learning how to how to read defenses, and said every day he gets to play and catch balls, the better he gets. Nate Burleson back to receive the Andy Lee punt. The time ticking away here in the third quarter. Burleson at the 20. And taken out of bounds at the 36. A reminder, tomorrow night on Fox, 8-7 Central. There's only two episodes left until the explosive fall finale of Prison Break. All new tomorrow at 8-7 Central right here on Fox. Viewer discretion is advised. What do you think? Do they get away? They have to get away at least temporarily, right? <laughs> at least one more episode, huh? prison break should go to Alcatraz here. We don't know if those three guys got off of Alcatraz back then. <laughs> Eight seconds left in the third quarter. This will be the final play before we get to the fourth. First and ten for Wallace. Sean Alexander with him in the backfield. Play action. Wallace steps up and throws incomplete intended for Jeremy Stevens. We'll have one more play before the end of the quarter. 
Good pressure by Bryant Young. He's really the only guy up here that can get pressure on the quarterback. Actually, he's inside right there, and he just jumps up the field and beats Chris Gray. Bryant Young. Good job up the field. And we talked to Hasselbeck. He said Brian Young is as good a defensive player as they'll play all year long, even though he's, he's an older guy. Second and ten, Alexander with a legitimate lane for the first time today and a flag as Alexander is tackled around midfield. This one might be coming back. Holding offense number 65. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's the end of the third quarter. Chris Spencer guilty of the hold. The end of the third quarter with the 49ers on top. Frank Gore's mom, Lizzie, has a bunch of people over at his at her house at Kendall Lakes, Florida. They're loving today. You're watching Fox NFL Sunday. NFL Sunday Ticket, brought to you by WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. This game is rated T for T. Thanks, Triple H. I appreciate it. I didn't start out a 10-time world champion. I am the game, Triple H. The king of kings. I started at the bottom and worked my way up. It's time to unleash the animal. Now only one thing can control me. And that's you. Are you ready for some hot diva action? So don't just watch it. Live it. WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Don't just watch it. Live it. Once upon a time, there was this idea. One of those proverbial big ideas. An idea so big that it needed help making the leap between possibility and reality. This big idea, it's your idea. Now who's gonna help you make it real? My favorite NBA League Pass moment. Yeah, run and shoot game. When Seattle beat Phoenix 152 to 149. 301 points. NBA League Pass lets you follow your favorite players and teams, even if they're in one city and you're in another. I was just sitting at home in Jersey, chilling at home in D.C. I'm thinking, man, I want to play in this game. With games in HD on NBA League Pass this year, it'll feel like I am. Get NBA League Pass from DirecTV for just $199. To order, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit directtv.com. You want to score big? Get NBA League Pass from DirecTV. Well, a suddenly stings. San Francisco defense that had allowed a total of 16 points the last two weeks has been able to keep Alex Smith in the offense on the field for the majority of the afternoon here in San Francisco. And the 49ers are 15 game minutes away from what would be a big upset here at home. And get them right back in the race in the NFC West. They're two games behind Seattle coming in today. They play Seattle again, but if they win this and put them into in a good position for the NFC in a wild card race in the NFC. Among the things on the line for Seattle is a 10 game winning streak against the division. And a six game winning streak against San Francisco and a flag. Prior to the snap, offense, false start, number 68. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That's Tom Ashworth, the right tackle, making his fourth consecutive start in place of Sean Locklear. Again, on the line is uh, San Francisco getting to within a game of Seattle and getting to 500 in the West. And that's big when you look at the wild card race. That puts them right in the thick of things. John Alexander around the left side and tackled at the 20-yard line. Brian Young makes the stop with some help from Walt Harris off the corner again of four. 
Arizona leads. They've got a 17 to 3 advantage at home against Detroit with about 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter. The Rams are reeling. They were shut out in Charlotte today. 15 nothing Carolina. Starting to look more like a two horse race in the West. Seattle struggled on third down today. That pass is caught by Daryl Jackson who's been conspicuously quiet this afternoon. He may however be short of a first down. Yeah he's a good yard and a half short. Oh that it. Seneca Wallace had to wait a long time for Daryl Jackson to uncover down the field. Daryl Jackson he's going to run down the field. He's just going to curl up. Took a long time for him to get down there but when you've got third and so long the guy's got to run down there first down yardage. You can see good protection for Seneca Wallace. you got to win on the early down so you don't get in third and long. On fourth and two, the punting unit comes on. Ryan Flackemeyer to kick it away to Brandon Williams, who calls for a fair catch at the 17-yard line. Seattle running out of time on the road. So thousands of other mid-sized companies run SAP software. Does that mean I'm not the maverick nonconformist I thought I was? Domino's Brooklyn style pizza boss. Big slice, big toppings, you gotta fold it like this. You call that a fold? Come on, fold it like a man. I am folding That's like ridiculous. a man. ridiculous. Get our new Brooklyn style pizza with your choice of extra large sausage or pepperoni for just $9.99. Hello, Mr. McDermott. Call me Jim. You'll be my son-in-law in a few weeks. Okay, Jim. Actually, I hope you can think of me as a buddy. Sounds good, Jim. Jimbo. Jimmy boy, the Jimster. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Uh, Jim? I mean, Mr. McDermott? Sir? Switch to singular with the fewest dropped calls. Now buy a Samsung phone and get three free. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Hummer, like nothing else. By Direct TV. There's good TV, there's better TV, and then there's Direct TV. By Bristol Myers Squibb. Together we can prevail. And by Singular, raising the bar. Don't go down Lombard Street unless you have a lot of time to kill this afternoon. <laughs> Always the case. Why didn't they just make that straight? Why didn't they just make it straight down? They sell tickets to go down that thing. <laughs> Do they really? No, they, they should. You and I, could, we could open up <laughs> like a, some kind of amusement park ride a there. Coffee stand at every corner and make a fortune. 1328 left on the game clock with the 49ers on top 20 to 7. All 20 of San Francisco's points came in the first half. And Alex Smith and the Niners offense begin this drive at the 17 yard line. Frank Gore has had a monstrous afternoon. In fact, he's approaching a franchise rushing record. And now that we're into the, the flexible schedule portion of the season, here are some of the great matchups that uh, the NFL has hand picked for Fox in the coming weeks. Next Sunday, the Bears at New England. December 3rd, Dallas in the Giants, followed by Philly in the Giants, and then New Orleans at the Meadowlands on Christmas Eve. Bears were winners again today, shutting out the Jets. The second straight game in New York. And Gore is swallowed up by Lofa Tatupu on second down. Let's check in with Chris Rose in Los Angeles for a game break. All right, Matt, the Colts trying to improve to 10-0 down in Big D, and it's kind of appropriate a guy named Dallas would score a touchdown. Peyton Manning to Dallas Clark, who was actually born in South Dakota and went to Iowa. 
I know that's all confusing, but the Colts have a 14-7 lead. Back to Matt, JC, and Chris. I don't know where you guys are all from. <laughs> Chris, thanks. Uh, Peyton Manning's first appearance in uh, Texas Stadium, and so far, so good for the Colts. Trying to improve to 10-0 this afternoon. Third and four now for San Francisco. Smith gets it away as he's hit. There's Frank Gore. There's more big yardage up to the 40-yard line. Tackled by Jordan Babineau, a gain of 16. And a good play call and, and some luck involved there, too. Seattle blitzes from one side. You're going to see Seattle come from over here. They run the screen to the right. See all the white jerseys coming on the left side of the line. They just throw it out to Frank Gore. Now there's not very many guys left over there for Seattle. He's able to turn it up for a first down and a big game. Again, Gore gets a player to the to uh, to breathe as Murray Six takes over here on first down, and the hand is to Hicks, trying the right side of the line that time. A game of a game rather of maybe two. Clock rolling with 11:15 left to play. And it looks like Shante Spencer, the left corner, is being escorted onto the trainer's table and not walking. Very able. Second and eight now with Hicks still in the backfield for San Francisco. Billy Badma has checked in. Play action for us. The deep ball and a wide open target. Did it get there in time? It did for Antonio Bryant. AB was wide open. And a flag on the play. Looks like this is going to come back, but if Alex Smith throws that ball sooner, even though it's going to come back. That's a big Holding play. Holding offense number 75. That's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's the first thing that's gone wrong for Jonas Jennings all day. Big Jonas Jennings right there playing that left tackle position. Working against Grant Wistrom. You can see that left hand right there. That's what they got right there. His left arm is, is out on the shoulder pads of Wistrom. Just bear hugs him. All in plain sight of Larry Nemers, who was quick to throw the flag on that play. So it'll mark them back, the 49ers, to a second and 18. Uh, Antonio Bryan did everything short of, of shooting off a flare there to try to get the football. It's Hicks still in the backfield with Smith. Pass is caught by Maurice Hicks out of the backfield. He's taken down from behind. By Lofa Tatupu, who's really stepped up in the second half. Again, a seven for San Francisco. Seattle's played much better defensively in this second half. They're flying around and tackling a little better, but they still have to work on the consistency because they've missed some tackles also. But for San Francisco, we've talked about the ball control and just keeping the clock running. That's what they want to do right now. They just want to make sure. That when they throw the ball, they're making good, safe passes that they can complete, keep the clock running. You know, if you happen to tune out of the NFL for a full year and you're now watching Alex Smith for the first time since his rookie year, this is a guy who's completely grown as an NFL quarterback. He checks it down here. Maurice Hicks out of the backfield once again. It'll be shy of the first down, however. But again, a good decision. Alex Smith, he thought about throwing the ball down the field, forcing it down there, but Antonio Bryant wasn't open, so instead he just dumps it off short. They're short of the first down, but the clock continues to run, and they don't turn the ball over. So Andy Lee on for his fifth punt of the afternoon. Nate Burleson deep for Seattle. Time ticking. Lee's punt checks up. It was touched inside the 20, and that's where Seattle will take over with 8.25 left in the fourth quarter. 
brunch. $30. Hey, that's okay, Wendy. That was a good carry. You're still the man. You're the man. Latte. <laughs> $4. Ooh, shake it off, Johnny. Rub some dirt on it. New piano, $3,000. All right, guys. They're not saying boo. They're saying movers. Supporting your team. Right, Sloan. It's on, Bobby. You still got the best arm in the neighborhood. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. This is decaf, right? Y'all ready to order? And y'all ready to check me out in the American? Amazing picture clarity of Direct TV HD. It's broadcast in 1080i. I totally don't know what that means, but I want it. For the best in HD, get Direct TV. That was an awesome show. Awesome. Hey, would you mind? No problem. <sighs> Me too. So, are you the bass player or the drummer? I'm not in the band. I'm just here for the Bud Light. Who's Ben? Johnny! Refreshingly smooth, Bud Light. Always worth it. Who's Todd Schischler? When I got my new H3, I customized it. I got the marker lamps, the chrome, the rims, brush guard, but I couldn't stop there. My big brown shoe. Turkey lurky do and turkey lurky dap. I eat that turkey, then I take a nap. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Thursday on Fox, one of the great traditions in sports, the NFL. Thursday on Fox, Bucks and Cowboys. Maybe that's been the problem with T.O. all along. Too much tryptophan yeah, in the system. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm going to be doing. Eat some turkey, watch the games, and I will be taking a nap also. So I feel T.O. there. Sammy Davis is checked in in the secondary for San Francisco. Taking over for Shante Spencer at that left corner spot. Wallace looking in that direction, and the pass is caught near a first down by Daryl Jackson. Jackson and for more on Shante Spencer let's check in with Chris Myers on the uh, 49er bench Shante Spencer suffering a right ankle injury has been taken in for x-rays he's questionable the rest of the way but a real team spirit over here on the part of the 49ers defense uh, they've been terrific all day forcing those turnovers a lot of confidence exuded over here Chris thanks and that's part of the Niners success defensively they've been relatively healthy on that side of the ball this year Wallace looking into the sideline, and he's got a wide open Deion Branch for a first down. And again, they went right after that left corner spot. Sammy Davis had the coverage. Whenever you get a backup guy or a young guy coming in at the corner spot, you got to go right at him. Sammy Davis in for Shante Spencer. And that's something that Matt Hasselbeck told us that he's really helping the coaches on the sideline is when there are adjustments or guys out of the game, he goes and tells them, hey, this guy. game now let's work on it. on first down Sean Alexander tackled at the line of scrimmage as a 49er loses his hat Brian Young playing another great game but you know the thing about Brian Young is he called this defense they, they stay after practice on Wednesdays and Thursdays for about 30 minutes and they correct all of their mistakes right after practice. They don't wait until the next day in the film session. They want to correct them right then, and Brian Young is the guy that spearheaded that whole effort. On second and 10 now, Wallace pump fakes once, goes into the corner, picking on Spencer again, or rather picking on Davis again in for Spencer. A flag on the play as the pass is incomplete. Sammy Davis, he... He better be ready to go. Illegal contact on the defense, number 50. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. That's on Derek Smith, but Sammy Davis, he better be ready because they are going to go after him. And 
He's got a big circle, a big target bullseye on his chest right now. They are going to be coming after number 31. We've seen it three times in a row. Anytime you get a backup guy out there on that island, they're going to go after you. They're going to test you. Yeah, Derek Smith guilty of uh, the 49ers league leading sixth illegal contact play this year. First and ten for Wallace. Guess where he's going again? Deion Branch touchdown Seattle. That was four balls aimed at that left corner. The backup Sammy Davis. And then they just hit the they just hit the bullseye on that target I drew. He's got to be he's got to know that they're coming after him. They just run right by him. Here's the bullseye, and they just just they throw it right at him. And he just lets Daryl Jackson run right by him. Get out of your back pedal, son, and run. He just lets Daryl Jackson run right by him for a touchdown. And it is Daryl Jackson, as I stand corrected, his eighth touchdown in his last nine games in Seattle's coming right back. Beneath the placid exterior lies a cauldron of activity inside the Wendy's new jalapeno cheddar double melt. Shown here, we see its many layers, each serving an important function. Fresh ground beef patties insulate the center, keeping it warm. A slice of pepper jack melts beneath bacon, and deep at the burger's core, jalapenos explode in a river of molten cheese. Man can only stand in awe of this miraculous way to do what tastes right. Rated M for Mature. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. Hide my head, I want to drown my sorrow. No tomorrow, no tomorrow. Session. Stand off. All new. Followed by House. 8 7 Central. Fox Tuesday. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Cadillac. Check out the Cadillac Navigation event going on now. Cadillac. Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit. When you're getting roasted like Sammy Davis just did, you got no friends. They don't want to talk to you. You don't even get a bench to sit on. He's got to sit on the cooler. There's nobody talking to him. Or anything. That's that's the life of a cornerback. Or the first year of 49er after three years in San Diego having a rough second half. Brandon Williams for San Francisco. With some running room tackled to the 32 yard line. Seattle has come back a one possession game. If you wear a Daryl Jackson jersey, yeah, I'm your biggest fan, dude. <laughs> One of the great things that I think I've been able to do in my life is, is seize opportunities. I wasn't even a starter, but the guy in front of me got hurt, and I had a chance, and I took that chance and had a big day. And so opportunities are, are seldom perfect, but I've learned that if you're not ready for them, they may not come again. During the Cadillac Navigation event, when you buy or lease a specially equipped Cadillac, we'll throw in the navigation system. I'm the same as you. I got a few mutual funds, make an occasional trade, but not exactly Mr. Wall Street, you know? So I see these TV commercials offering, like, I don't know, a few bucks a trade, which sounds great, right? Except when I go to sign up, a few bucks a trade is if you're making, like, I don't know, a gazillion trades a year. Like, I don't have anything else to do. Honey, okay. Sunday has
Resonate so big, it can only be called Super Ginora Gantuan. Terrific title. It jumps out at you like a rat in your underwear drawer. All new episodes with a Simpsons vacation so outrageous it could only happen in Vermont. Then, after American Dad, Family Guy just says no to sex. You can't give up sex. You see, man, you're what they call a practice girl. Followed by The War at Home, a Super Ginora Gantuan Sunday starts at 7, 6 central tonight on Fox. Fox tomorrow. Run. Run! With just two episodes left, everything is about to break wide open. They gotta take the plane down, just do it. Are you ready for this? An all-new prison break, followed by a special encore of House tomorrow on Fox. For your discretion advised. Seattle's best have traveled down the coast, and they are suddenly re-energized. Seattle is within a possession. I can't speak for that guy, though. <laughs> 6.33 left here on the game clock. Smith and the Niners passing on first down, and the shovel pass is caught by Frank Gore. A reminder, Tuesday at 9, 8 central, watch the Emmy Award-winning smash hit House, all new at its new time. That's Tuesday, 9, 8 central, right here only on Fox. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, as successful as San Francisco's been running the football the last three weeks, one would expect a steady diet of Frank Gore here. It is Gore for a loss, however, as Julian Peterson got in there for Seattle. Checking in on one of the big games elsewhere in Indy and Dallas. Let's check in with our Chris Rose in Los Angeles. All right, Matt, a penalty on the Colts defense nullified a Dallas turnover. And then look at the move by Marion Barba. <coughs> the third. His NFC best eighth touchdown has tied it at 14. Back to Matt, JC, and Chris. That one playing out, a little lower scoring than some of us expected. As you take a look at the NFC East, the Giants again, the class of the division. But Dallas can get close. The Niners just two of ten on third down today. Pass is caught by Eric Johnson, shy of a first down, however. Good defense by Seattle. They forced that ball to be thrown short. They played a soft zone coverage. Didn't give Alex anybody down the field. They forced that ball to be thrown short. And as a result, it's fourth down, and now they get the ball back. They're only down by six points. Boy, in San Francisco, picking a bad, bad place for its second three and out this afternoon. Andy Leon for the sixth time today. Nate Burleson again deep for Seattle. With the clock running at 4.23 and counting. Burleson at the 15. Equipment flying on the field as Burleson is flung out of bounds. Perhaps too much time left for San Francisco's taste. At zero price. Successful investing is about balancing risk and reward intelligently. For each one five and 10 year period, over 70% of our mutual funds beat the Lipper average, finding the right opportunity. Low cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. The Seahawks went to the locker room at halftime, down 20 to nothing. Seneca Wallace has four minutes, 11 seconds left to try to give them their first lead of the afternoon. This is complete to Dion Branch, just shy of the first down. And this Seahawks offense, J.C., has looked a lot different since halftime. It really has. And what they've done that I like is if you find a weak link, you got to go after him. You keep going after Sammy Davis until he proves that he can stop a play. When we talked earlier in the game, we talked about San Francisco not giving up any big plays the last couple of weeks when they played well. Well, Sammy Davis gave up two big pass plays, one for a touchdown that last drive. 
Second and two, Sean Alexander on the tough short yards tackled by Derek Smith. And that'll move the chains of Seattle first down. Now, as frustrating as the first half was for Mike Holmgren, three turnovers leading to 13 San Francisco points. And for them to still be in this, you know, we talked earlier, Matt, about the play at the end of the first half where they kicked the field goal and then not putting touchdowns on the board in the red zone. It, it could hurt them and could haunt them. On first and ten, they split Alexander wide. Wallace gets away from Marcus Douglas. And they say his knee was down on the turf. They were trying to get the double move against Sammy Davis. You see Marcus Douglas, number 94, good job getting there. He doesn't get him down there, but right there, that right knee, said that right knee touched the ground. They blow it dead. A loss of 10 on the sack for Marcus Douglas' third of the season. So second and 20 now for Wallace in the Seahawks. And they switch sides. Sammy Davis is now down here on the bottom. Wallace looking that way with time across the middle of the field and he overthrows Deion Brands. And that will bring up a uh, third in San Francisco County. Ashante Spencer is, is back on the sideline at the very least. But they don't need him on the side. They need him in the game the way they've been going after Sammy Davis. But now it's it's third and 20. If they could have gotten some yards on second down, put this in a man manageable situation, would have been a lot, a lot easier for them. But right now on third and 20, you don't have very many plays in your playbook for third and 20. Here's Sammy Davis now, the bottom of your screen. Seattle just one of six on third down this afternoon. Wallace fires in the pass, is caught by Dion Branch. He'll be shy of a first down, however. They've got to go for it here. Deion Branch with six receptions, good for 97 yards. The two-minute warning in San Francisco, a good one in the NFC West. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by the new AT&T. Your world delivered. King's pain is your gain. You're good. Pocket Bike Racer, one of three new Xbox games. Made it easy for everyone. $3.99 when you buy any value meal. Only at Burger King. The German word for safe is Sika. The Portuguese word for firewall is Moro de Fogo. The Chinese word for password is Mima. My company's in 17 countries now, and I can say secure in every one of them. Dynamic networking from AT&T identifies security threats before their problems, so Jane's confidence grows right alongside her company. The new AT&T, your world, delivered. When my brother started selling auto insurance, I, I got a little pressure to use them. A little? I'm State Farm Agent Amy Kaplan, and this is a true story. I didn't pressure you. I just, I think blood is thicker than water. So with some of the staff, we switched from State Farm to him. The service is horrible. Well, he wouldn't call me back, and he's my brother. So I called him, and he was ready to switch back. State Farm treated us like family. Yeah, better. Great service and great rates, it's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Call an agent today. Like a good neighbor? State Farm is there. Fourth and two and the football game for Seneca Wallace and the Seahawks. And Matt, I think you've got to roll Seneca Wallace out. You've got to give him an option to either throw the ball or run it to get this first down. If you don't pick up this first down, this game is over. You got to give him a you got to give him a choice, an option to try to make it happen. Alexander in the backfield. The hand is to Alexander. 
wow. going to be very close. The Niners are celebrating as though they stopped him. He's short. What kind of call is that with the game on the line? No need for a measurement as San Francisco takes over on downs. Fourth and two, the game is on the line. You go two tight ends and you try to run the ball. Give your guy, Seneca Wallace, an option to run. Get him outside on the edge where he can try to find a receiver down the field. You boot him out, but now if nothing's there, he, he's got an opportunity to make somebody miss, make something happen. You only need two yards. And it's not like they've been blowing the 49ers defensive line off the ball at any point today. And you can see they definitely don't blow anybody off the ball there. It's penetration as soon as Alexander gets the ball. Again, a full complement of timeouts available for both sides. Frank Gore. Did Gore fumble the football? No! Oh, what the Wendell Tyler just happened! Frank Gore has fumbled the football. Grant Wistrom picks up, and Seattle has given a ninth life. The only trouble Frank Gore has had this year has been just that, his sixth fumble of the season, his fifth, fifth fumble to lead the NFL. You got to secure the ball. You see that ball just gets punched out of there. With the game on the line, you've got control of it. you got to be able to close the door. Wallace is sacked. Roderick Green came off the edge. And it appears as though the 49er defense is going to have to come up with a second brilliant set of stops. his second of the afternoon and that should ice it down for San Francisco and who was he throwing the ball to he was throwing it to Walt Harris there was no one else even close and he just threw it right in the chest of Walt Harris well the Seahawks were given a second opportunity but the Fourth turnover of the afternoon by Seattle gives it right back to the Niners. And you've got to give this Niners defense a lot of credit. That's 11 turnovers the last three games. Looks like it's going to be three wins for them. And here's Seneca Wallace. He just, just another bad decision. There's nobody even close with the white jersey on. What a bizarre 50 seconds of football. Here is Gore hanging on for dear life, a first down and more. And Frank Gore with that run. A gain of 17 yards has now set a 49ers franchise rushing record for a single game, eclipsing Charlie Garner's 201-yard performance at Dallas back in 2000. And you see him at the end of that run put two hands around that football he's got to do that at the line of scrimmage you've got to know that in this situation guys are they're not really going to try to tackle you they're going to try to tackle the football and knock that out that's what happened on that last series when he did fumble he's got to make sure he secures that ball at the line of scrimmage and not once he gets down the field seattle has spent the timeout and they went right back to frank gore after what looked like the costly fumble. And on the very next play, Wallace throws the interception. It has not been a pleasant homecoming back to San Francisco for Mike Holmgren. I think he had better afternoons in the Bay Area coaching at Sacred Heart. Maurice Hicks. How about the 49ers? Going to take sole possession of second place in the NFC West, right in the thick of things. One game behind Seattle. They play Seattle again this season. It's 
It's been a long time since San Francisco has been in a game of this magnitude this late in the season. And it had been just as long a time between three game winning streaks for San Francisco. You can see Gore's yardage at 212 officially this afternoon. That's just one yard shy of the high rushing game by a back this year. Willie Parker had 213 versus New Orleans last week for the Steelers. This would be San Francisco's first three game winning streak since 2002. That was the longest drought between three game streaks in franchise history. Seattle still hoping for a chance to get the football back. Maurice Hicks tackled by Leroy Hill. And Seattle spends its final timeout. Sean Alexander's return today. A weird turn of events. A matter of a few seconds. Frank Gore fumbles right here. Gives Seattle the ball back and some life. The two-minute warning. And then Seneca Wallace, he comes back and he just throws the ball right in the chest of Walt Harris. Another bad decision by Seneca Wallace. And San Francisco gets the ball back. And now it looks like they're, they're able to just run the clock out. But... You know, for Seattle, it just didn't look like they came out ready to play today. That first half, the second half, they played much better. But just too many mental mistakes from, from jumping off sides defensively to, to bad throws by Seneca Wallace. You know, field position on special teams. And Nate Burleson catching the punt on the four-yard line. It just didn't seem like they came out mentally ready to play. Seattle is out of timeouts. 51 seconds left. And on third and four, Hicks bounces off a tackle, does not have the first down. Ken Hamlin made the tackle for Seattle. Time ticking away on the first place Seahawks, and we have an injury timeout now as Jonas Jennings is the injured player for San Francisco. Well, the 49ers line has been amazingly effective this afternoon as Jennings is able to at least get to his feet. 38 seconds left in San Francisco. We'll be back. Life is full of ifs. If in the blink of an eye, my six-year-old has turned 16. If my family's future means the world to me. Choosing the right life insurance to protect life's ifs doesn't have to be as complicated or as costly as you think. MetLife is the largest provider of life insurance in the U.S. We help you create your personal safety net by listening to your needs, filling in gaps, and building on what you already have to help you prepare for life's many ifs. After all, we're MetLife. Lance Armstrong for Bristol-Myers Squibb. Remember me, cancer? You gave me less than a 50-50 chance to live. You made me suffer, my mom too. But you made me smarter and more determined and a believer in miracles. Remember me, cancer? You made me what I am today. Your will, our medicines. Together we can fight the serious diseases. Bristol Meyer Squibb, together we can prevail. Using only my City Premier Pass credit card, I earn rewards points crazy fast and I will do it restrained with this restraining device. I start with the points for buying my ticket and Victor's ticket, then earn points for my miles and his. Unbelievable. Using only the City Premier Pass credit card, I rock the house big time. Rewarding, very, very, very rewarding. 38 seconds left in San Francisco. As we saw earlier, however, J.C., a, a Joe Nedney chip shot, not academic today. Yeah, obviously Seattle's going to be thinking, let's block this field goal and see if we can return it. Greg Terrell right there, 93, blocked one earlier in, in this second half. They're going to be trying to penetrate and see if they can block this field goal, pick up the ball and score with it. 
This will be a 27 yard field goal attempt by Joe Nittany. And it's no good again. For a guy who has never missed from inside of 30 yards, he gets one block, and now he just pulls one. The hold is there. Snaps good. The hold's good, and he just misses it. My goodness. He just misses it. Seattle's still in it. Seattle is, however, out of timeouts. They do have 34 seconds left to try to manufacture something here down by six. And, and where's Sammy Davis? I can guarantee you the ball is going to go at number 31. Sammy Davis playing way off back here. Seattle being given another second chance, and that one thrown out of bounds intended for Deion Branch. In the front for the 49ers, you know they're throwing the ball here. So Brian Young and the rest of those guys got their ears pinned back in the sprinter stance trying to get up the field for Seneca to throw the ball before he, he's set. And now what Seneca can think about is with, their, with this secondary playing so far back, look at all the room back here. They're just going to run out of there. He might be able to pull the ball down and make a big play with his legs and get out of bounds. Another four-man rush. Wallace has the pass off, and it's batted away, intended for Daryl Jackson. Marcus Hudson and Walt Harris had the coverage for San Francisco. That brings up third and 10, 23 seconds left on the game clock. Now you've got to be concerned with just getting a first down. Come down, you have no timeouts, and you have to run something to the outside, give your receiver an opportunity to get out of bounds and stop the clock. Or, like I said, Seneca can try to create with his legs and then jump out of bounds at the end of it. If San Francisco holds on, Mike Nolan's going to be sleeping in that suit. <laughs> Can't throw it there. Deion Branch trying to get out of bounds, but Keith Lewis is there to prevent that from happening. Game clock rolling, 11 seconds, and Wallace and the Seahawks yeah. are just flat running out of time. Strange call, you run a slant on third and 10 with no timeouts. With the game clock expired, Max Strong trying for a Cal Stanford play, and that's how this one comes to a close. The Seahawks 10 game winning streak against the West is over. The San Francisco 49ers hold the upset victory at home. The Niners have won three in a row for the first time since 2002. More from San Francisco right after this. No, I'm not going to go through it line by line, but have you ever actually looked at this thing? I mean... Account research fee, $32. Deposit verification, $12. Are these even actual terms? It's like someone spent their entire day thinking of ways to nickel and dime us. Big life. Go, boy, Four ways go. to dress it. There ain't no more. She is the team mom. Her boys are big. So she's big on Campbell's Chunky. Hearty meals to feed an NFL sized hunger. Team mom, we salute you. Campbell's Chunky feels that fill you up right. My clothes didn't fit. Your infection? Double. Wasn't it double ear infection? She bumped her head. I couldn't sleep. I typed in anxiety. I typed in depression. Diabetes. Sexual health. WebMD has information that used to be scattered in millions of places. All in one place. Organized information. Medically reviewed. So we trust it. I don't need millions of answers. Just one good one. More than 30 million people come to WebMD every month. WebMD. Better information.
information, better health. Kingdoms and queens, they all bow down here. Branches and branch hands are bowing to and I'm taking on my straw hat for you. Second, here comes the sun again. It's a shocking all new Family Guy shocker. Now I'm abstinent. Ah! Oh, I see what you're driving at. All new, followed by the War at Home tonight on Fox. I'm Chris Rose, a quick NASCAR update, final race of the season in Homestead, Florida. Jimmy Johnson, all he had to do was finish 12th to win the next Cup championship. He finished 9th. He gets the trophy. Afterward, Jimmy Johnson said, how about them Cowboys? Next time we'll see him February on Fox for the Daytona 500. Hey, what about the Colts trying to improve to 10-0? and 0? Working it down in Dallas, Marion Barber, the third, gives the Cowboys a seven-point lead. A little over three minutes left. Peyton Manning, fourth and two, looking for, I have no idea, but he doesn't find him. Dallas has the ball. We can see the Cowboys Thanksgiving on Fox. Back to Matt, J.C., and Chris out in San Francisco for the Niners' big win. Chris, thanks. Biggest upset of the day, week 11, and San Francisco has won three in a row with a 20-14 victory over first place Seattle. Time now for the UPS leaderboard. Seneca Wallace, three interceptions, a rough homecoming. Frank Gore was the big story. A new franchise single-game rushing record with 212 yards. Deion Branch had a big day in the loss for Seattle. Promotional considerations paid for by the following. For J.C. Pearson and Chris Myers, this is Matt Vaskersian saying so long from San Francisco, where once again the final score, Niners 20, Seahawks 14. Join us on Thanksgiving Day for the Bucks at Dallas. Good afternoon from San Francisco. Fox Sports thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. The NFL is online at www.